nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device and you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps so if you are on a desktop you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well you can also enable subtitles and the little cc on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if i am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, <clears throat> how's it going? <clears throat> Sorry, I was literally trying to sing like a song or something to warm up my vocal cords. <laughs> like I know what I'm doing with that. But you know, I've hardly talked all day and it's so, um, the air is so fuzzy in my office right now from cutting all these um, kits. There's like a lot of fuzz in the air and I'm wearing my little rabbit sweater, <laughs> which is super fuzzy. <laughs> These are the things you learn when you are uh, knitting, like what, what uh, yarn to pick. And um, I held it double with all of my leftover sock yarn. So that's what the color is in there. But I, look at the bloom. I am a bunny. <laughs> So anyway, hi Aisha, hi Beverly. Beverly, thanks for the timestamps. I haven't added them to part one yet, just because I haven't been in front of a computer. Hi Tiffany, you're seed shopping. That's exciting. I know like for gardeners, that's like a big deal. It's like the, it's like the shopping for fabric phase. <laughs> hi Delwyn, nice to see you. Hi Monica, hi Randa, hi Blair, hi Hillary, hi Danny. Did I say hi to you Danny? No, I didn't. Nancy, hi. You whip myself a thick fleece toaster sweater to wear to my daughter's. Oh, that sounds nice. Hi, Diane. <laughs> they don't stand up. <laughs> you know what I want to know? I want to know how to do the, the hair thing where you go like this. You know when girls, like, women have, like, the braids and they're, like, a, in a loop? Like this? How do they do that? Where do they put this part, the end? I'm so bad at things like this, like hair things. I'm getting better at the hairs on my, the braids of the hairs, the braids on my head, but um, bobby pins are one of the best and worst inventions ever. So, <sighs> hi Terry. <clears throat> I love that um, Terry had my back on the green corduroy. <clears throat> Someone else, Aisha found a green corduroy and then, then she messaged me. <laughs> Here's a leak, Aisha found it. Hi Mullen. <laughs> Everything, Tiffany. Hi, Deb. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, my. Maybe I made it worse. Hi, Christina. Yeah, seed shopping has no value. The thing with seed shopping is that um, I guarantee you, my husband will come home with seeds at some point this spring, and I'm always like, "Where are you? Where are you going to put those?" Because it's not like we have a, a bed to put seeds in. Like we have beds, but they're, they're like old. So the potting soil that whoever added to those is like long gone and they're like clay, right? So things are growing in there, things that are thriving in this soil mix, but I would really like to plant natives and just digging into the soil, it's impossible with roots and clay. Um, and, um, when you dig clay, it makes it worse. So I'm like, 
you can't just sprinkle all of those things. So you don't see Terry. Terry is mama. I said, mama said so, Diane. That's Terry. You're adjusting some patterns in Inkscape. Oh, what are you making? You always got something going on, Christina. You got your hair chopped to shoulder length. Think I need to change immediately. Miss my long hair. I'm growing. Yeah. You're cutting out your corduroy sylvan today. Navy blue. Oh, it's all so good. Okay, blue sounds so. I mean, I'm making a blue one, so I, I guess I should be quiet. But that sounds good. That rusty color one and all the pictures. I want that pretty bad. Yeah, you have a different name, Terry. <laughs> Elbow patches. Oh, so academic. A literal ton of compost for your birthday. <laughs> I got um, birdies, you know, those, um, uh, like, oh my gosh, like the words are escaping me. Um, yeah, she, she thought you, she meant that you couldn't see her. You can see her, but her name is Mama Said So. Diane, that's what. I saw what was happening there. Uh, the birdies are like these um, like above ground beds you can plant into. They look like um, livestock water troughs, but they come in colors and they last a long time. They don't have a bottom either. I got those for my birthday, a birthday and a, and a half ago, two birthdays ago. But where I wanna put them, I wanna do something kind of different. So I should just, I should just put them somewhere and plant them because they're ready to go then, right? Run a rototiller. I don't, see the thing is with that, I thought about that too, too is I looked into clay soil because I would, what I'd rather like is that it, you know, not revert back to clay. It's gonna revert back to clay. I mean, we're, we're in volcano, like a volcanic area, you know? So um, I think what I need to do is just put stuff on top of it right and there's so many roots in there too the rototiller what will happen is if you if you rototill the clay it'll seize up more so then it'll become harder but i don't understand it very well i just know that i'm like okay maybe i should wait <laughs> you know build the sides and put all yes exactly blair that's i actually think that's i feel like that would be the easiest thing to do at this point <laughs> those they are kind of fancy that's why I got them for my birthday because I was like I would never buy I would never pay I only wanted one by the way <laughs> I got three <laughs> and well I wanted a few like I would have taken a few but I just wanted them like a foot tall and he got like the two foot tall ones so they're like almost ergonomic but they take so much more soil so my idea was to put some stuff at the bottom like I have some compost that's like meh but then I've been thinking about like, no, I shouldn't do that. I don't want weeds in there. Um, and um, I should just, I think, oh, oh, no, we did. We dug a ditch when we put in our solar. They had to dig a ditch. And of course, they didn't put all the soil back because now I have a divot under a brick path. So I was thinking I'd put that stuff because it's like a mix of rock and, and soil and put that at the bottom of my birdies and then put soil on top. So it's not all good soil filling the entire birdie. So but you can put like a tree in those. You know, put a lot of organic on top and let it break down and plant root crops like daikon. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, Walter. How's it going? Oh, a veg vego is like something like that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of natives. Layers and layers of organic material and let it break down. Okay. Branches, tree stumps. Oh, yeah. Crepe myrtle. Oh, really? really? <clears throat> Crepe myrtle is a native here. Working but listening. You got some exciting plans this year. I won't spoil your surprises and stuff. Not surprises, but your plans. <clears throat> okay. Let's get into this. All right, so I spent, I love how I always have a lisp when I start streaming. I don't actually have a lisp, I don't think. I just, it's a nervous thing. Um, I'm not even nervous, whatever, you know what I mean? All right. So the last we left off, I had started the underlining process. So I had, um, sewn my shoulders and side seams, right sides together, turned, 
And then I fussed with them a little bit so you wouldn't have to sit and watch all that. And so where, when this layer, the top layer wouldn't lay flat, like say it felt like it was too big or even too small, I trimmed down my seam allowances on all of those that did that. And it was usually like, I think it was like, um, both sleeves did that and two fronts did that. You're hella, <laughs> okay, Rachel. <laughs> Um, and that did the trick that made them all lay flat. And so then the other thing I did was I went to, around and I stitched in the ditch. So you see my little stitch line right here. This is optional in the instructions. They mentioned you can do this. And I think this is a great idea because it's going to make it like behave better. See, look at how nice that is now, right? This is my back. It has a, it has a center back seam. So I left only one to do so you could see and you don't have to sit through all of them. So here's one. So this one I still have pinned and I haven't done the stitch in the ditch part. So we're going to do that. Now, I also sewed all my binding together because I'm going to do a Hong Kong finish on the hem edge and the facing edge. Wait, my, I can feel my seam allowance flipped. I can feel my seam allowance flipped right here. Let's just poke it in there. Probably got pressed wrong. So um, I am definitely getting like I've my little like things that I've done to personalize the sewing of this are definitely stacking up a little bit. I, I realize that. Um, and hopefully I'm still keeping you on track if you're not doing the all the little things that I'm doing. One of the, I'm, I'm concerned about the collar right now. <laughs> um, there's a seam that shows when the, when the, when the jacket's buttoned up at the, co the collar facing juncture. And I don't like that. I, I really can't, you don't have to stitch in the ditch, Aisha. It's optional, but I want to. I think it's nicer. I think it's easier in the long run. Um, it'll keep your seam allowances looking nicer too. It's way back here. Okay. But that seam like I it's I think it's just the pattern drafter in me that it kind of irks me. Um, I'm not going to change the draft or anything, but I am going to work on like I'm not going to get rid of that seam. I'm just going to suck it up buttercup. But um, the other thing that um, I noticed about this collar in a lot of the photos is that it's floating above the jacket where the, the collar, the collar um, joins the facing, Mullen, where the top collar sew, sews to the facing. So when your jacket is open, when your jacket is open, you see a seam right here. And that's, I'm not gonna say that's not okay, but it's not how that would be drafted for a shawl collar. That's a convertible collar. Like a convertible collar, convertible collar is like a camp collar or a collar collar stand. Could technically be a convertible collar. Convertible means that you can wear it open or closed, right? So um, it, 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 when you, open like say you don't button up your camp shirt all the way to the top and it opens up oh i have a shirt right here i'll show you i sh i told myself i wasn't going to talk about this but here i'm talking about it because i know it's bugging me okay so look at this shirt this is this has a collar collar stand right and because my print is it's a print and it's dark you can see see the inside fabric right so you can wear this like this right all the way buttoned up, that will work. And you can leave it unbuttoned and it still looks fine, right? That, and if there was no collar stand, that would be a um, camp collar. I'm oversimplifying, but you know what I mean? So um, if you were to button this jacket all the way up, I think you still get this. You still get this seam. Because usually a shawl collar is a continuous piece. There's no seam there. So I'm not going to get rid of that. I'm not going to go that far. But I think I can help the collar floating above the jacket by sewing it a little differently. And I'll sew it where, because it's basically like a, a, 
uh, like the draft is more like a, um, they drafted a convertible collar. That's what they did, but they, it's not a convertible neckline because there's no button up at the top. I'm trying to make this simple. Anyway, I'm going to try and help the, the floating thing. But I will still tell you what to do if you're not doing my crazy stuff. And I'm basically doing it as an experiment. Um, yes. Yes. Simply put, yeah. I drew a picture of it in the stream the other day, didn't I? Or no, I, I probably held up my hands. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 we're going to bind this. We're going to bind this. And we're going to do this. This is going to go like this. So yeah, we're going to go like this. Yeah. But it's not like you could put this collar directly on the neckline and put a center back seam and get guaranteed results. So I'm not recommending that. I, I'm going, I have the center back seam and so I'm finishing it so that I can um, still have like a live seam to adjust if I want. I don't know why I lined this up to the lining, but that's okay. I can feel a pin back here. So when we get there, I'll show you what I mean. Oi. My pin got stuck in the little rubber bumper there. I've never had that happen. <laughs> I also cut my lining shorter. You don't have to do that. Just let me experiment so you don't have to, all right? <laughs> Anita's in the guild too. I've seen their name in there. I, it cracked me up when I saw them. They're incognito. Who is need a break, really? <laughs> you have a special foot to stitch in the ditch? Oh, that sounds kind of nice, honestly. This is so far away. Because uh, I, I don't know, actually, why this is so far. I should really, I should have trimmed this seam allowance so I didn't get this much over here. Because even though I added this back seam, I had forgotten to add the um, extra to make it self-bound for the underlining. I didn't think about that. And I know I'm probably changing my seam allowance back here, but that's okay. I don't mind taking in the back of the jacket. We'll just make sure we adjust for the neck where the collar shows. Usually a lot of kids and you need a break. <laughs> Can I introduce you to M Martina, also known as Mama of 13 in here? <laughs> you guys might have lots to talk about. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to trim this down. I'm going to try to trim this down. Maybe I should just stick to the... Self. We've done so much prep on this. We have our pockets. We have all our pieces underlined. And now it's time to assemble the jacket as I hack away this seam allowance. Once I get this done, we're going to be assembling it. <laughs> You're humbled. It's okay. I had one. I had a lot of kids too. <laughs> my friends would watch my daughter and be like, I really love your daughter, but she's exhausting. <laughs> my daughter was like very, um, very, I don't know how to put it. Like people would say, you know, when you're looking at your kid, she looks like she knows, like understands everything you're saying. And she does kind of have that look, like when she looks, when she was a kid, she would, you know, I doubt she really did. 
but she looked like <laughs> she looked like she did. <laughs> you love your stitch in the dish fish. I love it. Oh yeah. Oh, let me turn the um, chat so I can see you guys. There we go. All right, I added water to my best friend here. My iron. Steam, glory is steam. We don't need all those pens now. Wait, did I do this wrong? Oh, I just need to make this shorter. That's what it is, right? Oh, wait, I did do this. No, 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 I didn't do this wrong. I didn't do this wrong. Ooh, that's some second guessing there. I don't know why. I think it's this whole underlining bit. So then when we sew, oh yeah, wait. No, I did do this wrong. This is not my right side. Oh, wait, this is going to go like, like this. Oh my goodness, all right, we'll bind it instead. <laughs> Please, if you're taking my seam finishes classes, I promise I know what I'm doing. <laughs> this, is how we, this is how we adjust. Oh, right, Terry, yeah, I know that one. Yep. Anything with a heating element is always, is always a tough thing. You know, do I change to cream thread? I think we're gonna, I think I'm gonna let it go on the center back seam, but when we do the Hong Kong finish, we'll change to a cream thread. I did, I sewed this as if we were binding it. It is a little wide for um, a Hong Kong seam. So we'll just bind it instead. It's slightly bulkier by doing this. It's pretty loose jacket though, so I'm not like, to put out by it. I had a question for you guys I was thinking about. Did I not iron this one? I guess that doesn't really matter. I don't really need to. These little tails, let's get rid of this guy here. We don't need that. My binding arrived yesterday. I really want these bags I ordered to arrive so I can start putting my kits together. I tried to think of all kinds of ways to kind of group the kits. And I, I um, like I know people prefer plastic bags because it's like, okay, well this will make it last a lot longer just in case nothing um, happens with your kit for a while, right? You wanna set it aside, you just wanted to grab it because you're not ready to sew it. But this, they're gonna use these right away. And I'm sort of an anti-plastic person. So I wanted paper bags. I want them to arrive so I can start putting these things together so I can move them. All right. So let me put my back together and then we'll be back on track to Sewing this. Might need my, I might need my edge stitch foot or my zipper foot, which I don't really like using. Come here, this squirrely little thing. Oh, we have, I forget I have other feet. I really should put these on the magnetic board in front of me instead of on my cart, since my cart's not next to me anymore. 
Yeah, yeah, I just don't like single use things. I just like, even right now, like even cardboard boxes, like God, during the Panini, we were getting, everyone's getting so many boxes. Brand new boxes, only been once and then you just recycle it. You know, like, I know you can use them for other things, but there were just so many at the time that, you know, we're drowning in boxes. Not to mention my daughter had moved. Um, we had, um, you know, moved Michael, or uh, Michael's father had passed. We'd moved his stuff. Like, oh my goodness, we were, oh, and I had closed chicken boots. <laughs> like, I was swimming in boxes for a while there. So do you just put them on your machine, Terry? I guess I could do that, but I felt like that was a lot of magnets. <laughs> yeah, I think I will do that, right, Blair? Yeah, we did a little bit of that too, Walter. I'm not a fan of using this foot. Just not a lot of traction on it. This is working pretty good though, honestly. Okay, let's go press it. It's a lot of, mag exactly, very strong magnets. This is kind of bulky. Looks nice. Okay. There's my little button tabs. Remember I'm doing the little centuroo right here in the middle, like that. Well, yeah, but I guess what I mean is like, I get, I, I mean the same in a lot of areas. I'm in California, <laughs> you know, but if I were to create kits, I could just go buy there's a billion places to buy plastic bags to put my kits inside and send them to people, right? I won't be banned from doing that. So, oh, nice, Amy. So let's see, I have, let's steal the feet I have here. Would, would one of these have been a good one to use? Let's see. Oh no, this one, you should just throw this one away. <laughs> How many of you have this one on your industrial? Oh wait, yeah, that's what it is, yeah, exactly. It's the original foot. They put this finger guard on here. How are you supposed to thread your needle? <laughs> so this one right here, what is this one? What's this one? Yeah, mine came with it too, but they, they removed it. <laughs> they weren't allowed to, they're not supposed to. Um, this is the, uh, this is an edge stitch foot, right? I bought all these and I forgot I really need to use them. And then this one is, shearing? What's this one, Terry? This looks like a buttonhole foot. I can't do a buttonhole. I'll have to go back and look at my receipts. I can't believe I've forgotten. I'm kind of disappointed in myself. Oh, invisible zip. Oh my goodness, invisible zip, thank you. This thing's amazing. Yeah, thank you. I'm like, I can't think of anything that has two rows next to it. Hmm. What's the flat one for? What's this one? What's this one? Shearing? Oh, okay. Maybe they're right.
Oh, interesting, Walter. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. All right, well, <clears throat> not to play with those at some point, right? All right, let me look at the directions here that I wrote. All right, let's do the shoulders. <laughs> they don't sell a box of feet, though, for me. Oh, my gosh. These pieces are really big. They're just, they're, I just threw them all into the trash. <sighs> With my little Angora bunny fluff here. Okay, so we have, this is a sleeve, and this is a sleeve, and these are gonna go on the bottom. There's our collar. There's our facing over there. Here's our back, here's our front. You got this. Really? Okay, I really have to try that, the, the ruffles and stuff. <laughs> All right, put this together. Shoulders, we're gonna do the body and we're gonna do our facing. Why isn't my shoulder lining up anymore? Can I put my regular foot back on though? I got this screw and it is nicer to be able to hold on to it because it's big. But I am not strong enough to undo it <laughs> with my fingers. Plus one of my nightmare idea scenarios is that my foot comes undone while I'm sewing. So I'm always cinching it, you know. All right, so now we are left with half inch seams, right? There's one. Oh, really, Nancy? I'm not laughing, I'm just like, oh. I'm kind of in the same boat. <laughs> I should sell, I, I've tr I tried like very weakly to sell my, uh, my old serger. <laughs> okay. So we have our, our shoulders and then we can press these open and then we're going to get that look that they have in all their pictures, right? So we'll press that in a second once we do our facing as well. So now we're going to get our facing pieces here and we're going to do these at the shoulders here. These, uh, these seam allowances are five eighths, aren't they? Oops. I was just doing that last one at a half inch. Oh my gosh, where is there is. Amy, your quilt that you just finished with 2000 pieces, holy moly, that thing is gorgeous. That's not a gift, is it? You're keeping that. My interfacing came undone right there. All right, let's go and uh, boop. Press our seams. Mm -hmm. Get into the good stuff. All right, gonna put our collar in now. This is kind of one of those those uh, projects where you do a ton of stuff and then bam, it's done. So that's about to happen pretty much, except that I'm gonna do some experimenting with the collar area, because I have an idea. Um, I think where the way they sew it together is pretty clever because it would definitely be a, um, uh, like a, uh, there's not a really word for it, but guaranteed success basically. For people especially who are just like, you know, I'm not a big fan of putting collars on. They've bitten me in the butt before. Um, 
this, the way they have you sew this one on is probably going to be one of the easier ways to do it. So, and I'll walk you through that. I'm probably not going to sew mine that way because I think I have an idea for, for something. All right, so let's just, maybe we should just play with this on my dress form. What do we think about that? Let's just look at it real quick here. Give me a trick, see? So, why does this feel so long? <laughs> All right. So let's take off my shirt. I clearly could put, have put these higher up, these little um, things if I wanted it. Like here's more my natural waist up here. I'm assuming that's, yeah, that's where that's going to sit. Let's see. I'm just going to look at the side seam, make sure I have this in the right spot. All right, so it's not double breasted. It's only single breasted like that. All right, so if we put, <laughs> right, Nancy? I know what you mean. <laughs> so here's my facing. We want the collar. So if I put this at the seam, you can even pin it as if it's sewn. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh, I missed right here. See this? Hmm. It was a jigsaw puzzle, Amy. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, Amy. I thought you had it quilted with a puzzle piece um, stitch. And I thought, oh, that must have taken forever. And what an interesting choice. Like, it was really obvious and I thought, man, that must have been like so intense to, to have quilted. Um, and I thought, but kind of a good like a uh, symbol for <laughs> something. That was man, I don't think I'm gullible. And then those kinds of things happen. I'm like, oh. See, it's this right here. I'm just not a fan of the, this. <laughs> um. We might be able to get rid of it if we went like this, if we pinched out right here, if we 
took the pattern and rotated the collar. See how, see how that hugs it down better? See the difference? <laughs> well, you're a quilter. <laughs> it was a huge puzzle. I bet you guys can't unsee this now. You see the difference? Am I crazy? See that? See, this is I like... So if you don't have your jacket, um, you know, buttoned, or it's like buttoned to here and opens, you see the seam right here too. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. I don't think I'm being picky. It just bugs me. That's just how it is. This right here, I don't like this. But I could get rid of it by this, doing this. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of where I'm at, Deb. I noticed it in the original, like the, the initial picture but it was only on one of the jackets and I thought that could have literally been like one of the prototypes in process which I think you can 100% use in a lot of cases and um, it could have been the fabric choice it could have been who sewed it it could have been so many things like there's so many things that could do this so um, but this right this is like do you like that better Ooh, Libby, I love it. Hi, Anna. You're on the road, so I can see what you're saying about the flowing. Style choice. Anna. Don't let them tell you that. <laughs> I don't mean so liberate, liberate, I just mean people. <laughs> so the, the thing is like, if we take this wedge out, let's see if we can go all the way to the neckline, because this is that's the risk right now, is that you have to pivot this out all the way down to the neckline. So let's see if we can pivot out from the neckline out to the collar edge, and um, we don't have an adverse effect around the roll line, because if we do, then it's a little trickier to fix it. Well, I think that looks pretty good. I think we could do it. Hmm. Well, are you guys up for that? Because I have enough fabric to make the change. We just need to recut the collar. What's on my pattern table right now? Oh, I have a pattern on there. Let's see. We'll just go over here. And um, I feel like this camera's about to fall off this thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, you guys. It's my own thing, you know. We need this jacket. Let's see, how did I do with the camera? Well, not great, did I? Let's see if I can adjust it a little bit. Oh, we wanna go this way.
Let's see if we can um, adjust it a little bit more. The lighting's kind of met over here right now. Yeah, I just like, this is like no, you know, well, I mean, I was about to say this is no critique on this pattern company, but I guess it is. And, and I, I'm not trying to be a critique. It's just for, for me, this is what I would want. So, I, cause I really love this pattern company. I like the, I like the way they, handle things. I like the way they treat their customers and their employees. Um, I've had really good interactions with them because I've Zoomed with them before about something. Um, I love how transparent they are about who does all the work on their stuff. You know, I really like that. So I, this is just, you know, it's kind of why you're seeing me so fewer and fewer patterns on my channel by by pattern companies because I am trained in this and these there are definitely preferences a pattern drafter can make and it's not my business and it's none of my business. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, they can do whatever they want and like, shoot, man, it's totally cool. Like, I, I, whatever. Um, but I have my own preferences as a, my dra as a drafter. So whatever makes a living last longer. You're so cute. This is definitely gonna make the stream last longer. Let's see, we need our, you're only gonna need your collar pieces. There's two, right? Yeah, here we go. Happy on puppy. <laughs> mm, I found that the extra was right here, Mullen. If you're okay with a shoulder seam, then yeah, you could do that because some collars have shoulder seams. <sighs> I'm getting a stomach ache. <laughs> okay, wait, here's both my call. All right, so here we are, and um, we're pretty much right at the shoulder. There's a shoulder notch right here, you see that? We're pretty much there. So we just pivoted this out. This is a very easy um, change. And um, we've been having really good discussions about like, say you did a jacket in a corduroy, you're gonna, want to choose which way you want the nap to go on your collar. So if you want the nap on your collar to match the nap of whatever your front was cut, you're gonna to wanna to cut your collar like this with the text right side up. If you want the nap or the, if there's a motif like elephants, you want them to be right side up, you need to cut your collar like this, okay? So, um, I personally don't like the way this collar is drafted. I'm gonna change it. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. All right, so this is, I'll do this in a more drawn out way. So we're gonna draw in our seam allowance here and it's only quarter inch at the neckline. Let's zoom in the camera too. Where's my mouse? Oh, there you go, Mullen. You just got rid of it all together. Let's, let's uh, t t t uh, zoom in. How's that? That works pretty good, right? I don't wanna to do too bright because it's really hard to see with the white background. All right, so I'll use a red chunky marker though. How's that? And I have to use a dirty ruler then because that's one thing I won't compromise on <laughs> is using a marker against my clean ruler. Okay, so here is the shoulder notch right here. 
And um, I'm just drawing a quarter inch line right there, okay? And cut, cut it, yeah, that's a, all, a definitely an idea too. We could try that on this one. My, my only thing with collars on the, under collars on the bias is I would put a center back seam so that your bias is going like this or like this rather than one way. And I can show you guys that in a second. All right, so <clears throat> we could measure where this is at you know, like where I pivoted this out to. Here's my center back neck, right? Like right about here. We can we can actually mark the center back by putting this on the fold. So it's something like something like this. Here we can draw on this collar actually too. So right. So here's our. But um, so I'm gonna. Let's see, we're gonna measure over to the center here. I'm not sure, just in all transparency, if this little flare is gonna happen on all sizes either. Oh, this is only half a ruler. And it was the wrong half. So I'm measuring to the center. I'm measuring along the seam line of the collar right here. And right now I'm getting five and a quarter inches. So I'm going to see where that's at on here first before because I'm going to try and give you an easy way. So what I was thinking originally was could you just do a, sh a right angle best you can from your shoulder outward? And you probably could. It's This is where I just measured that to. <clears throat> so we're going to do this. And then we're going to take it in, holy smokes, uh, three eighths on each side, so three quarters. So we're gonna slice, this is my outer collar. This is my neck where the shoulder is. We're gonna slice up to the seam line there. If you've done any Fitopedia with me, you know this is where I would draw my alligator mouth right here. And then we're gonna cut up to the back, whoops, not through like I just did. But if you do, that's okay. We're gonna draw a three quarter inch mark here. And we're gonna overlap it like this. And it's the same if you draw this three quarter inch on this side, cause see, look, this edge is over here, right? So it's the same thing. All right, so now we have this little bumpery do here. So we're gonna, and, and when you do this, when you overlap it, we're talking about a um, incremental things here. So when you overlap here, you'll hear me say, do this on the seam line about a thousand times. And if you ever interact with any of my content. So when we overlap this right here, right, we're pivoting here. This needs to line up on the seam line. So we're overlapping it all the way to, um, sorry, I didn't mean to draw this one here. We're, we just need to draw this. Basically what I'm saying is don't mark it down here on the perimeter edge and mark three quarters of an inch over here. We're marking three quarters of an inch on this line here. All right. When we're talking, this isn't a, admittedly this isn't the really tiny increment, but every little bit counts, okay? So now we have our new collar shape. This already looks a lot better to me. I was already, I was so concerned about this curve here because this is, uh, this is kind of Peter Pan-esque, but it's not a Peter Pan collar and it doesn't lay flat like a Peter Pan collar, so it's not drafted like one. All right, so we need a little more paper and we're going to fill in this outer edge right here. And we're gonna, we're gonna put on so little that we need to tape the backside. Please don't skip this part. You don't wanna lose your little sliver. Um, I need a finer tip pin to be accurate here. But we're just gonna blend this outer collar edge now. I never use these for drafting, they're not great. <clears throat> they don't like tape. I got this big fat line, how could I go wrong now, right? And then uh, on the neckline here, we're gonna do the same thing, but on the inside, we're just gonna blend it in like that, right? So now we're going to trim this off. You just want a nice smooth line there and trim this off. 
So on this one we added, here we took off. And now I always look at the back side and go, do I like, do I like this shape? Like this, it's really hard to see. The, the marker can really skew what you think is great. So turn it over, look at the back, all right? So now to draft our under collar, by the way, this is to the top collar. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mention that. Top collar, if you did it to the under collar, that's okay too, you're gonna do the opposite of what I'm about to do. So um, we need to um, draft an under collar. We could make the same change to the under collar, that's fine. But it's almost more accurate to just draft another under collar. So we're going to um, we're just going to trace this out best we can. Oof, I hate tracing paper like this. And we're going to draw our center back. better marker. You need to transfer the two notches that are that is along the neck here, right here, right here, all right. This is how you make an under collar for any collar by the way. We're going to connect our center back like this. This is our neck. I'm all shouting at you guys. This is our neck. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is our perimeter here. So norm normally your collar, you know, when you have a collar, it looks like, right, here's your notch. This is our opposite. No, this is actually, this is just flipped. Let me draw it the way this one is. Usually your collar would look like this. This is the center back fold, center back neck right? Neck. See these two differences? So like say this is a camp collar, this is a camp collar. This is what we're dealing with here. You see how much, how really different this is? Fold. Right? Roll line is somewhere like here, so then your collar would look like Like that, right? That's that, right? This is a really unique collar. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is. This might be um, just like a guide for you when you're sewing. So I'm leaving that so we don't really wanna change. Yeah, so convertible collar means that you can wear it completely buttoned up or open and it creates a natural lapel. When you leave it unbuttoned, and it folds out, you know, like, um, ay, ay, ay. Yeah, Let's see, can I do it reverse? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you create a natural lapel like that. And this would be, how would this look? This would look like this, yeah. Or something like that, the seam or something. Don't, don't look at the side. You get what I mean. Right, a shawl collar, well shawl collar, like this, right? This is double breasted, but you, you get the idea, right? If it was single breasted. Now, <laughs> now if you had a, a jacket, like a blazer, a shawl collar is, a notched collar on a blazer is not a shawl collar with a notch like that. It's not. Yeah, but a, a shawl collar pattern piece would look like, uh, let's see, um, let's say here is my shoulder, here's my armhole, right? Here's my center front. Um, uh, it would go like this. Something like that. That's how this pattern piece would look if it were a shawl collar. And so now right here, so this is the, the center back neck. This is the back neck right here, this portion. Back neck, 
This is the shoulder, right? Obviously, it will be like right here. So the there's like a break line. Do you have you heard of the term break line? Where it's like where the um, collar that's like a fold line kind of like yeah that's what the metro shawl collar looks like yeah yeah so there's a, like this line here that your collar it's not like that I'm kind of confusing pattern drafting lines right now with the break line and the fold line so then if this collar were folded over it would look like this right here right. And so this is all built on here. And basically this is your outer garment. This is your under collar. And the top collar is um, built on with the facing. And so yours, there's no seam right here. So when this folds over, you know, when it becomes a, a shawl collar and it's folded over, it's, there's no seam right here, you know, like you have like here. So, and this one's not meant to fold over, right? It, it's not the, there's no lapel on this, on the Sylvan, there's no lapel. So um, there's really only like four collar styles. That's what's kind of funny to me is that they're very subtle, but they make a big difference. And so, <clears throat> the Sylvan neckline looks like this, right? Right, so here's our buttons. If you didn't put the collar on there, which you, you could totally skip the collar on the Sylvan and then it complete be a completely wearable item still. So you can button the Sylvan up all the way, right? But if you leave the top button open, it's gonna fall open a little bit and you'll see a seam right there. I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong. It's that it's, it's not a collar style. I don't know how to describe this. I'm not like, an, I know like I'm a good pattern drafter. I know a lot, but I'm not an expert. Like, I mean, I, I don't, it's not that I'm not an expert. It's that I'm not like this. I haven't spent my life studying collars. You know, like I could probably sit here and, and think about it and read about it for a couple of days and be like, okay, got it. You know, now I know the family tree and how the ancestry connects to all the colors in the world and everything. But um, this is, this was my problem with the Joni is that it was, it looked like a notched collar, but it wasn't. Same with the Donnie. The Donnie sews like a, the Donnie has, is a really weird thing. I don't own the Donnie, so I haven't seen all the pattern pieces. The Donnie, what's that one? It It's supposed to look like a notched collar, but they sewed it like a convertible or something like that. So anyway, um, you're, if you like this, it's a, this makes me really happy because in the next Fitopedia section, it's all about necks and shoulders. The next shoulder changes are all very straightforward and very interesting and simple to do. Neck, shoulder, so we have shoulder slope, right? We have um, neck, the, the thickness of the neck. We have position of the neck, right? Like where the neck is on the body. So there are a lot of things going on with this little tiny bit, tiny area of your body. But the problems come when you want to change pattern pieces to reflect the fit adjustments that you did. And collars are kind of the big um, stumbling block, right? I do a whole two page long thing showing you exactly the differences between each collar style so that at least you know, okay, I'm dealing with this kind of collar style. And then you can go to that collar style to know how to change your pattern to do the things that you need to do in the fitting. So the, um, and the next section, like the PDF is pretty much done. I just need to triple proofread it and then record the videos. The videos are going to be easy for me. Yeah, the, the Metra is a shawl collar. Most robes are a shawl collar, right? But like, if you were to look at a pattern drafting book and you were to look up collar styles, they don't even have shawl or notched in the collar section. They put that in a jacket section, interestingly, but they are collar styles. They mostly focus on convertible and stands. So upright collars. So like 
um, a stand collar or a band collar, whatever you like to call it, or convertible collars, which means you can wear it open or closed. Like you can wear it all the way up. Peter Pan, flat style. There's five styles, that's right. Peter Pan, you cannot wear open and closed. You can only wear closed. You can leave your shirt open, but it just stays the same. It doesn't create a lapel. And Peter Pan's the flat kind, right? Sailor collar, that's Peter Pan. So anyway, back to our collar conundrum here, and then we'll get back to sewing. <laughs> Um, so this is our new uh, collar, right? This is our new one. So this is our under collar and we need to, this is our outer collar edge here. This still for me, I'm just like, why is it going down? You know, when it would go like this. We need to trim away like an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna do zero here and then we're gonna go like a full eighth of an inch along this edge like this. And we're gonna remove that. This is so bizarre. Will this be enough? Like I can't, there's no, like this collar has three sides. One, two, three. This one has two, one, two. <laughs> so um, that's another thing that's very different, right? The shawl collar point, there's no shawl collar point. It's built onto the pattern. This right here, this little point, this is what you guys are thinking of is right here. But th there's no point. Right? This is one pattern piece. So just trying to, I know for a lot of people they're like, oh my God, I'm so lost. But I'm just trying to like r relate the spot to the spot so that you can kind of go, okay, <laughs> I know kind of like now where we're at. We're inside out and backwards, you know, <laughs> and I want to make you inside out and backwards. So let's, um, I think I'll just use that line. It'll be, it'll be good enough. I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit along the way. We're already in the wild, wild west here of uh, drafting, so. And then I'm cutting this line off because it's outside my pattern. I don't usually cut with a rotary knife, by the way, when I do pattern drafting. <laughs> and then this is my fold line, so I always do a wavy line there, so I, Remember, that's a full blind ceremony. All right, we're gonna get rid of this. So we do not use it by accident. And now we can recut our collar. That's all we needed to do is just slash and overlap at the shoulder and we've fixed the float. Eh, let go. All right, and we can get rid of this. So the one of the other things I was thinking about doing is only interfacing up to my seam line. Since this fabric is a little bit, um, <clears throat> wouldn't it be tragic if I actually didn't have enough fabric? <laughs> it would, but I have a lot of fabric. Here we go. <clears throat> www of drafting. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. That makes me happy. I feel like I've cultivated an audience that's kind of interested in that kind of thing. And I'm really glad that there's others that are sort of into it. And that's the thing is like, there's no, it's no hate to pattern companies because there's so many reasons to make some of the choices. And like I said, like you could leave this collar off. You still have a usable, completely hundred percent have a silhouette, right? You, you don't even have to make the collar. Um, you could also be a company focused on getting people to post their finished makes, right? So if you're a pattern company and you're like, well, I really want people to be successful so that they post about their make and everybody thinks, okay, cool. I'm seeing more and more of this jacket. I really want to make one for me. You might be on the side of, um, guaranteed success. And the way they drafted this is guaranteed success. So, do I have enough here? Maybe. It's flatter now. It's a gigantic collar. I think I have enough here. So there's a lot of reasons to do things. Maybe you want to design a new collar style, you know? 
So my fellow corduroy silver people, which pockets have you chosen? <laughs> it's a good question. You're not sure yet? And that's why I say it's not my business, so it's none of my business. And um, Libby brought up earlier in the live chat today about like I haven't done a, a let's be honest in a while, let's be honest pattern review. And that's kind of for a reason. I did a book review um, that, you know, can't believe why I ever did one of those again, right? <laughs> Um, I really wanted to be able to see my pattern pieces. Ooh, you did, Malin. That sounds nice. With your corduroy. Ooh, I love it. All right, so this is our under collar. All right, Sarah, nice seeing you and happy birthday, right? It's your birthday yesterday, today. Oh, it's Terry's. It was Terry's birthday yesterday. I was thinking we need to have like a um, birthday calendar in the guild. And then, you know, if I'm live anywhere near that, I could be like, today we want to wish a happy birthday to so-and-so. Okay, I like that you're calling out the kangaroo pocket. It's like the patch hand pockets, right? The angled ones. Did they call, maybe they called them kangaroo. I think that'd be cute. You could even do the corduroy sideways for like a cool alter stripe effect. Um, this is the neck edge. So I'm gonna nip the neck right here on the fold line. They do tell you to sew this from center back out and then um, like one direction and then the same going the other direction. If you if you follow that instruction, put your give yourself a center notch. Look at this. This isn't very lined up there. There we go. That looks better. Okay, let's get this one cut. This is the one we want on with interfacing. I don't know why I was going, you know. It's Sarah's today and Terry's yesterday. Ah. Anyone else? When's your birthday? Anyone's birthday's coming up, or it have been in the past month or so? My mom and sister are, and my niece, oh my goodness, my mom, sister, and niece are at the end of February. Which I'm actually usually ready for because I usually get something during Christmas time. But I didn't do that this year. Okay, so this is our under pocket and we're going to interface the other one. Oh, such a big piece, <laughs> such a big piece. Let's see if we can get it on here. I'm, I'm being very wasteful. It's only because I'm on camera right now because I, uh, we're on a detour. We need to get back on the road.
Oh, that's great, Mullen. A meter less than the suggested, that's crazy. That happened to me recently on something. What was that? I can't remember what that was now. What have I sewn by anyone else? Maybe it was a video I had to record. Okay. Well, let's hope my change works, right? I'm going to um, trim off the seam allowance. I'm doing this because my fabric doesn't crease when I fold it and iron it. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of help. So I'm just trimming off the quarter inch seam allowance because this fabric's a little quirky that way. All right. Okay, we are back in action. Let's see if we can iron on this interfacing. It is? What is your name, Handmade PhD? I love your content. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Okay, you guys, I just got these two confused. Walking over here. Okay, this is my outer. <laughs> Naomi. Ah, oh, well, nice to meet you, Naomi. I really do. I, I don't know if you guys have seen Naomi's Instagram account, but... Um, they do a lot of, um, uh, like, they'll take a pair of pants and put it in a program that will allow it to walk, like, with an avatar in the size that they selected. And they'll do side-by-side -side comparisons of different sizes and different things. And I, I love this kind of discussion because, for me, I'm just, like, I'm curious. I'm very curious. I love it. And happy birthday. Wow, lots of good people born right now. Struggling to chat, Hillary. <laughs> it's okay, Hillary. <laughs> Yours is tomorrow, Sydney? Oh my goodness. So it was Terry's yesterday. It's Sarah's today. It's Naomi's today. It's yours tomorrow. Holy moly. I love it. So many birthdays. All right, you guys. Uh, what am I missing? I just need to move this camera over here, right? Move you here. Birthday buddies. You know what? We always need cake, Deb. If we're being honest. I, <laughs> did I, oh, I didn't tell you guys this. Why is this? Oh, oh, that's right. I, I slid it over. Let me. Pan it. <laughs> so uh, after the stream the other day, on Thursday, two days ago, I, um, let's see, we, we want to go like this, and we need to zoom way out. All right. I had this uh, gift certificate to a shoe store. There's actually a shoe store that survived the fire here, and it's kind of it's kind of funny, like it's like a regular old shoe store still here. And it's just so out of context. We have nothing, no clothing stores, no nothing. And it's next to a cafe. And so I went to the shoe store and I was like, you know, I don't, I wonder if they're even going to be open. I wonder if they're even going to have anything that I like. We'll just check because I can go to the Chico, the Chico location if not. I was already so hungry because I streamed for a long time on Thursday, but I just wanted to know before I went and got food. I didn't even know what my food plan was because I left my my lunch here. <laughs> so I got shoes. She was super curious, super sweet, um, really chatty. I was starving when I left there. And so then I went 
to the, there was a cafe next door and I was like, oh my God, look at me. I'm like in a town right now. I went to the shoe store and bought shoes, my first pair of shoes in forever. And I went to the cafe and I got um, a little, like they, they called it a flatbread. It was like a mini pizza and I ate the whole thing. But I also got a cheesecake because my eyes were bigger than my stomach. And you, this is where I'm, this is my point in my story. They wrapped the cheesecake in a piece of cellophane and just tossed it in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so funny. I was like, huh, this, they gave me a pizza box and then a little paper bag and I was like, okay, whatever, I just need food. And then I opened it and it was just this little like gushed up <laughs> cheesecake in this bag. It was so funny. Okay, where are we at? Where's my jacket? <laughs> it's across the room. Let me get my jacket out. Over here. I'm so glad we didn't sew the jack the collar on yet. And we could, um, I'm putting my pattern piece in the envelope so I don't lose it. Oh, and here's my facing. No, you better not be making your birthday pack and with a cheesecake. You know, I was like, how am I supposed to eat this? <laughs> I mean, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not about, you know, I'm not above holding a piece of cake and putting it in my mouth, right? My mom got, or my mom, my, my daughter got me some nice jellies from the chocolate shop she works at, a, a strawberry Meyer lemon. And so I didn't eat the cheesecake that day. I, wait, I ate it yesterday and I put some of that jelly on top of it and I put it on a plate <laughs> and ate it with a fork. Okay, here we are. So here's our jacket. Um, and so the next step, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's, that's, where it was heading, Anna. <laughs> it was like, like that would have grossed me out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just such a funny thing because I'm actually pretty lowbrow when it comes to things. I'm like, please don't give me all the extra things. Don't put everything in a container. You know, like I should just eat it here, you know, instead of creating all this stuff. But um, I, I think they were closing too. And I just was like, I just want to get back to my office. Oh, I also stopped by the chocolate shop. <laughs> I was like, I'm about, I'm about town. There's a chocolate shop that reopened. We have it all in paradise. <laughs> okay, so here's my jacket, right? We're, our shoulders are together. Oh, my, I didn't really get that lined up very well. Um, here is our, our body. Um, we've got our facing shoulders together. We're back on track now. And so the next step, and maybe because I just made you redraft your collar, I will sew this the way this, the, the instructions are because now I have a lot more confidence on how this is going to go. So you're going to take your, um, your top collar, the one that's interfaced, <clears throat> and your facing. So we need these two pieces first, all right? <clears throat> and we're going to sew these together. So normally what you would do is you would sew your collars together, right? And then you would, I'm still having qualms about this though, I have to admit. <laughs> Will Sarah me do it? All right, and we're gonna pin the hanger loop out of the way. I think I made mine a little too long. Just pin it down there. Do I wanna do this? Libby, do I wanna do this? <laughs> oh yeah, this is, so this might, well, I don't know what this notch is for. And I didn't put it on this pattern piece here. Oops. Let's do it here. We can get this notch on here. Oh no, it's there. Do I want to do it this way? So basically you attach the collar to the facing, the top collar, top collar, interfaced one, because this is the one that's going to show to the world, to your facing. And then you sew the other one to the body. And then, then when you have that all done, right, you're gonna have a piece that looks like this, right? You would sew around the perimeter of the whole thing. Don't ask you. What would you do in this case? Would you do it this way? I don't know if I would do it this way. I think what I worry about is <clears throat> that the collar isn't, it's kind of like when you are sewing a set in sleeve 
to a garment. The reason you set it in, you, you do your underarm of your sleeve and your underarm of your, uh, or your side seam of your garment, and then you attach the two cylinders together, is you get a nice continuous circle, right? And your, the sleeve is set in there nicely. Same with the collar. If you create your collar, you create your body, you put the two together, now you have this separate thing that wants to operate on its own and can fold over and do what it wants to do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do it. Let's just do an experiment because I can't leave something alone. <laughs> so I'm just going to sew my collar together around the outer edge here, quarter inch seam. So here's my notched interior curve right at the bottom of the screen and the top edge, sorry, I put the sharpness way up so my fabric, it's picking up my fabric, dang it. <clears throat> it's like a snake, it's so slithery. Here, I'll put this side up so you can see my interface side. I'm thinking that the reason they do this is the um, point right here, but you don't have to set this point on. They also have you press the seam open, and I just think pressing a curved seam like this open is another reason for it to not lay flat. You know? I'm going to put my seam length down a little bit. All right, so let's get this. So now remember, your under collar is a little smaller. It shouldn't be hard to ease on there, but we're gonna. Okay. All right, so I did that outer edge there. And um, I'm gonna clip this uh, curve. I'll do it on the side so you can, it looks more interesting. <laughs> you can kind of see where I'm at too. This way when we press this outer edge and that seam allowance goes to the inside, these little flanges can kind of overlap one another they don't need to splay out um, because they're going to an interior curve rather than the other way. That's why I'm thinking like if you were to sew this seam to the neckline and then you press this open, I just, um, you'd have to cl clip that. Otherwise it's not gonna press flat. And it's going to also kick your collar up, make it float. See you, Anna. Have a good time. All right, so now let's, let's press this. And we're gonna press the seam toward the under collar. I had to think about that for a second. One of the other steps in this collar construction is they have you top stitch the whole perimeter, like center front, collar edge, all of that, right? If you do that, make sure that you've pressed your collar so that when your neckline lines up like this, you see a tiny bit of your top collar there poking out. I have like an eighth of an inch because that's what we allowed, remember? And that's okay, like don't put the seam right on the edge. That'll also make your collar float. <clears throat> Top stitching isn't the solution to making things work sometimes. It does look nice though. Like I, I love me some pop stitching. 
All right, so let's get a nice curve here. I press that seam first so that I get no little like blurps, you know, like I don't want the, I don't want this to kind of go like this on the seam right here, right? We want this nice and flat and we're not folding on that seam. That seam goes under. So you're looking at the under collar on top right now. Get this lined up here. So make sure you can see your seam. Probably can't on my, on the screen here, but I can see it. <clears throat> Lining up your neck edge like that. That looks really nice. All right, Elena, have a great weekend. <laughs> How does the shoe store turn into what I had for, what? <laughs> Okay, uh, so now we're going to, oh man, it's so much, it's so much coat. It just keeps slithering off. So now we're gonna lay our collar, under collar side down on the neckline here like this. And make sure it's all nice and flat. And this is needs to end like right there at the seam line there. Let's see, where's the notch? There's the notch right here. And so I'm thinking that there's a quarter inch seam allowance also on this um, center front, but we're gonna fuss with this in a second. So I'm just gonna leave this like this for now. I'm kind of letting the lining lay where it wants to because of the underlining. <laughs> they did relate to something. You guys wanted cake. And I, I thought it was really funny that they just tossed my cheesecake in a bag in cellophane. <laughs> my great Aunt Tessie stories. Remember the gal who was here for a bit? She was really enthusiastic. I don't remember what her name was, but... Um, she was like, we need a great Aunt Tessie Club emote or something like that. And I was like, oh, I love that. I actually don't have a great Aunt Tessie. <laughs> you forgot about the cake. <laughs> Sometimes I do too. Sometimes I'm like, wait, why did I start this crazy story? This is dumb. It's not entertaining. It's not interesting. Someone's definitely being like, get back to the sewing lady. Or as that one famous commenter said, just shut up and sew. <laughs> Do I look like your sewing monkey? Apparently I do. Trying to get this to work in here, but looks a little longer. So I was just trying to see if it was me or not. How are you doing, Eliza? I didn't know you were here. So I kind of want to draw in my seam allowance. So if this is quarter inch, right? This is quarter inch. What is this right here? Do we know what the center front seam is? No. This is this pattern has the seam allowances drawn in on some things, but not others. Wait, yeah, it does. That's right. So uh. So it's kind of hard to tell. I want to know. Mm -hmm. A 
quarter inch. Okay, good. That was honestly the right answer because I was like, see, here's my quarter inch right here. And see, there's my collar tip landing right there. That's what we want to see is this, this line right here at the collar hitting that point. If you're ever in doubt, like, I don't know what's supposed to go where, draw it on your seam allowances so that you know. All right. So I'm going to sew from center back to the neck. Oh, wait, we need the facing. <laughs> it's very tempting to um, attach your collar in this kind of um, scenario and then go back and do the facing. But here's the problem with that is that if you don't perfectly line up your stitching and you won't see it, right? So if I've stitched this and then I lay this on here and I can't see where I've stitched unless I flip it over, um, you might end up having visible stitching along your neckline, right? And you don't really want that. So you don't want to have to deal with that. Trust me. Cause then you're like seam ripping stuff and you're like, Oh, this feels bad. You know? Hi, Julie. How's it going? Bottomless brunch. That sounds liquid and dangerous. <laughs> I will tack this right here. Kind of inside the seam allowance just to kind of secure it. And then we'll put our facing down. <laughs> you guys are so funny. All right, let's see, let's tack this one here. Get rid of this little seam allowance blip. <laughs> That's true, Libby. <laughs> yeah, Julie. <laughs> Bottomless brunch. <laughs> Sounds like a Sunday gone wrong. Or incredibly right for some people. Isn't there? There's one pin here. Okay, I felt I thought I felt another one under there. Alright, once we sew this seam, we can put my Collar draft to the test. Truly bottomless. Yeah, I was all concerned, Julie. <laughs> all right. Can we get a quarter inch seam with this, this lining kind of creeping? Yeah, we can. Okay, good. I'm going to pin it in a few places. I, it is pinned. I can see it pinned here. We're going to make sure. And let's do the other side to make sure. When there's underlining, man, you might as well just line it. It's a lot of work. But it looks cool. I get it. But man, it's a little bit of work. Hi, Fiona. Oh, look at my facing. I didn't cut the shorter length facing. I thought I did. I remember thinking that. That's funny. That's so funny, you guys. I'm kind of surprised you guys like this lining fabric. I thought it was kind of dowdy in some ways, but I just love how folksy it looks. It kind of has that a little bit of a block print vibe, which I love block print stuff. Um, you know? All right, we're gonna just trim this facing off here. Because it's kind of kooky. All right, now let's sew the perimeter. I, I pinned on this side, except for down this front right here. I 
thought I got all these eight layers, but I guess not. It's 12.30. <laughs> Maybe she's just starting the brunch early. It is, it is actually Sunday for her. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a party girl. Yeah, exactly, Terry. All right, I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam, but I, th I think down here I'll do a little bit bigger. I'm a little, I mean, mm, it will get secured with the facings. Maybe we'll just stick to the quarter inch. I'm gonna do something down here with this, so um, don't uh, think we're done yet. <laughs> and uh, YouTube, I am not inserting an ad, so just go away. It's not something, yeah, I think that that's sometimes the best lining. I bought this really cool fabric once when I got to go to Josephine Dry Goods. This was like, God, the internet was a baby probably. I was there a long time ago. And I had heard about a fabric store that so, uh, sold fabrics for garment sewers. And that was so unheard of at the time. I don't think we, I don't think we had internet for like sewing, or selling fabric yet. And everything had been taken over, all the fabric stores had been taken over by quilting. And so there wasn't any garment fabrics. It was so hard to find them. And I had heard about this fabric store, Josephine Dry Goods. And so I went and it was amazing. It was amazing. I was like in heaven. Well, I got this really cool shirting like a really traditional looking men's white with blue ticking stripe kind of shirting. Very classic dress shirt, but on it was printed this really cool um, motif, like a, like a, a kind of like a flower, a stylized flower in navy and mustard. It was like a two-tone. And I could never figure out what I wanted to sew that in. Oh my God, this jacket is so heavy. I feel like I'm gonna get a wrinkle right here. Am I gonna get a wrinkle right here? We're not, we're not, we're saying no to that. So I, um, I held on to it and I held on to it and I held on to it. And then I used it for the lining for the Azara skirt. Perfect lining fabric. It was such a perfect lining fabric. But you know, it was, it was shirting. It meant, it was meant to be like a dress shirt. And if I was wearing like blazers and went to an office, it would have been really kind of a cool dress shirt, dress shirt, shirt to have. That's true. That skirt looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, just don't go into that live chat unless you want to spend money. All right, I just put my needle right off the edge of that collar and now I'm pivoting. I may have to like fix that, you know, the alignment because I can't see precisely what's going on under there right now because of the facing. But right now it's looking okay. I have a feeling I might be taking out this little bit of down here because what I'm going to do is um, shorten this. Yeah, I'm going to shorten this. That's what it is. Oh, I might need to um, actually I might want to Hong Kong finish this first. Anyway, all right, right let's see where I'm at. Did I get all the pins out? There's one here. There was collar drama. <laughs> collar drama that we turned around. But see, now that's the other thing is that this collar, I just now noticed this. This is, I knew there was something up with the center front here and I couldn't put my finger on it. I just figured, put my finger on it. The collar should end at the center front and it doesn't. It ends at the edge. And what I mean by that is, 
when you button up a jacket, right? When you button up a jacket, your collar doesn't overlap, right? This one, this one maybe does, I guess. See, but you would, you would, your collar should meet at the center there. So, all right, let's do a little pressing and then we'll put it on the dress form and see how I did. It was self-imposed drama, let's be honest. I, there was something about the way the collar lays in a lot of the photos that I just wanted to check and see if I could fix somehow. And so that's what I did. You don't have to do what I did. You know, I had a pattern company say they wanted me to sew something for them, like on the channel. And I was like, yeah, email me. They never emailed me, but they wanted me to do a free pattern. And I was like, mm. things like that, man. Okay, let's see. Get this nice on the edge. I made this jacket a little bit more work than it needs to be. <laughs> Who, me? All right, so we could try and press this. So though, if you did it their way, the seam would have been pressed open. Oops, I need to fix this right here though. Um, that's probably what I thought was the tuck. It'd be pressed open on both these two and then the other two, so. But we press the collar down. That's another weird thing, is that usually your collar seam goes into the collar, but that's not unheard of at all. There's not like, you know, you don't have to do that. Depends on your, your fabric sometimes. Let's get this pressed right, one on top of the other. Let's do the same thing over here, go do, 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 do. Do do like that. Get it right on top. All right. I didn't do that to center back neck, and I can kind of tell. I just sewed it differently, only because I think it'll lay a little nicer if you sew it um, this way. Yeah, so, oh, free thinking time sense. Yeah, so I ended up changing the, I, I ended up, oh yeah, this looks, this looks pretty good. What am I attached to right now? Oh, I'm just knocking these down. Okay, let's look at it. Yeah, we're definitely laying a lot closer, don't you think? So now if we, if our, Collars open, you're still gonna have the seam. I didn't do anything about that. But yeah, so the thing I did, Beverly, was I made it so that, cause this collar was kind of floating like this above and I pinched out on the perimeter here and we recut and sew the collar. Now the collar, the way I sewed it, they have you do the top collar to the facing and the under collar to the outer garment, yeah. <laughs> and then you would sew the whole perimeter like, along this edge and along this edge all the way around. And I just did it more traditional, so. Yeah, I think that worked. I think that worked really good. Okay, good. So where are we at? <laughs> Hi, Nafmi, how's it going? Let's see, all right. Uh... Under collar to jacket, collar to facing, trim hem. They did that. Sleeve to body. Oh, we're flat. I'm flat felling the the seam. Dang, this should have been a three-parter. I think. 
Oh, Trixie, please. All right, so right now, I wanna think about this hem area here because we want this to go up here like this and we want our um, facing like that. So we could cut the facing and seam it right here. Oh, we need to trim this pocket lining too. And this one. Okay, so if I do this, um, you could, Jackie. I feel pretty confident. What size are you making? This was the size 16. But yeah, I mean, I'm always about samples, you know, like you can't go wrong, right? You'll feel better. Am I right? But I, I feel pretty confident if you do what I did, you'll get something approximating that. So we're folding up here. Get that a little straighter. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then if we do like a half inch seam there. So this is tricky. You could do this two ways actually. You can do this so that your um, Facing seams down here, right? Like you can do this. It was three quarters, yep, to nothing at the neck. You're gonna flat fell your armhole seam but the seam was way better going towards the sleeve. Mm, really? I thought it was drop shoulder. Isn't it drop shoulder though? So you could just seam your facing here, right here at the bottom. Like this. No, you can't. You can't do that. Wait, don't they tell you to do that though? You ha you have to do it where the fold line is basically. So here's the fold line right here. And that's basically the sew line of your facing. Let's see if I can, how, how well I do here. <laughs> like this. Right? And then if we trim this away, right? I'll show you. So then it goes like this. And then you, you get the you get it down there at the bottom. So that's one way. I was gonna do it up here. This is this is better like this. And I this might be how you do it in the instructions, but I accidentally cut my facing for the longer length. Yours doesn't drop that much, huh? Let's see. I really wish this had side seams. Mine drops a lot. Where, where is it? Oh, there it is.
that underarm look like? They're in the same place now. Okay. Look at that collar. <laughs> so then what, what do you do then? Are you gonna do French seam? It's so much fabric. That's why I was thinking front flat felled. So the next step would be to um, do your your um, do your um, sleeve to the garment. We'll do the we'll finish the hems when we do all the uh, the Hong Kong finishing and stuff. Okay, so here is the back sleeve. So I'm thinking flat felled. I'm wondering, is there ease in the sleeve? Yeah, collars are not good. I'm getting, looking more academic by the second. <laughs> it's so much jacket, sorry, I keep fiddling with it. Let's see. So if I, yeah, I don't think there's any ease, so we're we're kind of good for this. All right, so I'm gonna flat fell my um, just my sleeve to the body because at this point, there my all my things are so clean finished, and I don't really want to bind that seam. So you can just sew this right sides together and finish your seam allowance however you however you were planning on doing it. So for me, I'm gonna flat fell it which means we're gonna sew those wrong sides together at the full seam allowance. Can you, can you just behave, jacket, please? Just behave. You're gonna be a jacket soon. All growed up. I wish today would be a, today is a good day for my husband to know that a cheeseburger and fries would be a good choice. <laughs> He's already run so many errands today. <laughs> okay, okay, but let's talk about tasty snacks. You're just watching, you're going, oh, I'm glad, yeah. I sometimes agonize a little bit over people being like, why don't you just sew it the way they have it? Because I'm not paid by them. <laughs> if they paid me, I would do it exactly how they wanted. But I, this is my jacket. I'm doing what I want, Wah. So that's how it is. I have given so much content away for free on my channel. <laughs> it's my time. So um, let's talk about snacks. You're, that's what you're eating right now. Oh my gosh, stop it. Well, you need something to soak up that endless brunch. Heck, in the middle of the night, you're eating a cheeseburger? Oh, I couldn't do that. I wish I could do that. My daughter can do that too. All right, so my husband goes to Costco. I never get to go. I never get to go there. And Costco in the States is like a place where you can buy things kind of in, in a, a bigger size for cheaper. So you better like it. Um, and you better be able to use it before it expires, whatever it is, whether it's hair mousse or toilet paper or um, popcorn. <laughs> oh, it's 9 p.m. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, BLTs. That would, that would do the trick too. So he brought home this um, sweet potato snack. Oh my goodness, Tiffany, you should. Um, he brought home this sweet potato snack and it's just like dehydrated, but it's still soft um, sweet potato. And that's it, that's all that's in there. They're so good, they're so good. I don't eat them all the time. I can't eat a whole package because it would be a lot to eat, but you could literally eat it as like a meal. It was so good. I'm hoping they still have them. Okay, so we're doing, this is what I was gonna do. Let's go this way. And Libby's thinking maybe not. And I can definitely see a lot of curve right here. I could go this way, you know? What if I did that, Libby? What if I just went that way? Flat fell the other, towards the sleeve. Is that what you meant? 
I actually think that would behave a lot better. So let's do that. All right, so now we need to trim down this sleeve here. I love sweet potatoes. Love them. All kinds. <laughs> I think if I describe the texture, you might be a little bit like, mm, but so good and satisfying. Loki really wants some too. He really wants to like it too. Okay, cool, Libby. Yeah, I think that that's a good call. I think you're right. It's too much curve in the armhole to do the flat fell seam. And he eats a lot of sweet potato in his food normally, so I think that's why he's like, oh, that sounds, that smells familiar. Molly used to love it too. I would be baking, roasting sweet potato for me and they would come into the kitchen like, oh. And they would just sit there and eat it like it was dog treats. But gosh, it's so good. I'm wondering if I could make this in my dehydrator. You know? Well, that, those would definitely be good, Molly. These are a little healthier. <laughs> Um, let's do our other one and then we'll go to the ironing board so we can do both at once. Oops, sorry. It's whacking the camera here. Let's make sure. I'm so um, traumatized by my last project where I put my sleeves on backwards for gardening purposes. Oh, that sounds good. I should. It's funny. I give it to him and he sits there and he, but then it comes out and he tries it again. He he's definitely wants to eat it and like it, but um, I think it's too gooey for him. It's like, it's like him eating peanut butter. It's too like soft, you know? <laughs> Jackie's all, that sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds good. That sounds good. By the end of the day, she's had a cheeseburger, bought double-sided knit, redrafted her collar, went to Costco to get sweet potato snacks, bought every fabric they mentioned in the chat. <laughs> Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> did, I just, did I unthread my needle? No. Oh, I caught it. Oh, I love it when that happens. Do you ever wonder um, if the people in our life closest up to us realize that their whole life is dictated by what we're talking about? <laughs> you know, they're like, dang, why do we keep eating sweet potato for dinner? I don't know, it just sounded good. Everyone's like, cheeseburgers again? We had that yesterday. Mm. Did we though? I don't remember that. Oof, okay. <laughs> Do you need plants? <laughs> plants are not cheaper. <laughs> Plus they require care. <laughs> It's harder to sew on. Why is that? Toasted broad bean. What's a broad bean? Is that like, what's a broad bean? I have to think about that in the bean family. I love beans. <laughs> Someone told me on my video, one of my videos recently, it was how to sew flat felt and French seams that, uh, that you, you have to press it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I uh, know. <laughs> I press. I may not show you I'm pressing, but I mention it. 
You have to press. Or the person the other day told me that my bobbin was in wrong. People are feisty this year. Guess what? So am I. Oh, I was going to say, is it a fava bean? I don't think fava beans are broad beans, are they? No. Wait, I don't think they're fava beans, though. I think broad beans are something else. I, I could be wrong, though. If she's Lima, we're all out. <laughs> if she says Lima, we're like, uh-uh. They are? Oh, okay. That's funny, because that was the first thing that came to mind because they're so huge, and I was like, that sounds like a, a, a bean that would be big, you know, broad bean. That sounds good. Farmer's bean, oh. Those are a lot of work though. Definitely something you don't wanna have to do yourself. I used to have a friend that grew, grew them. Oh, cool. Toasted broad bean. That sounds so satisfying. Like it's like the size of a piece of popcorn. Okay. You guys are all going to wish you started sewing one of these when I did. <laughs> it's looking so good. Yeah, and if you want the knit version, isn't, oh, today's not Friday. That was the Metro Blazer was on sale yesterday, right? For $5. All right, so I thought about trimming this seam down but it doesn't really need it. it only needs it right here where I bound it so we might be just taking out a little bit there if we can't I think I can get it we got our hammer we're fine right here we have our hammer and we're about to have side seams with we don't have to do anything to because we've already painstakingly finished them once we do this all that'll be left is the um, the finish of the facing and hem, and that's it. Let's see all these pins out now. I've got things secure. Mmm, that sounds so good. Oh, I just, did I just bonk this? What the heck? <laughs> yeah, the, right? They're full, is it full or full in Arabic? Take this pin out now. My goodness, it's a lot of jacket. Should I just go for it? We're just gonna go for it. That's how we roll around here. Let's line that all the way up along the edge there. All right, let's do this so that we never have to do it again. I don't like redoing <clears throat> um, flat felt seams. <laughs> it's a little bit curved for this. It's working, but... Um, I think if you knew you were going to do this, I would recommend trimming your lining down, your underlining down, so that you're not dealing with this kind of thing either. You'll get a crisper flat felled seam. Let's get that little thread in there. 
Let's um let's brighten this up a little bit, take down the the it's like pouring rain here today, so we'll brighten this up, take down the sharpness and zoom a little bit. You could probably do this. Yeah, that looks better. Still really sharp. All right, Walter. Thanks, I appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Nice seeing you. Oh, that wasn't bad to sew over. I imagine if you had something a little thicker kind of pulling it because I can feel that the sleeve is kind of going blurp over the body right here under here so let's just pull a little bit okay jacket you need to get up here it's it's heavy I'm gonna need the all too Flat felling corduroy, hmm. I mean, doing any kind of stitching on corduroy, like top stitching, definitely adds another layer of things to think about. Yeah, you might not wanna do that. I, I don't know if I've ever flat felled corduroy. I'm trying to think if I did on those on those pants I just made. This is, oh, I missed it right there. Let's see, I felt funny right there. That was why. Just take out this little section here. It is Aisha. And part, par, um, also because I wanted to participate in Blazuary with you guys in the guild. They have a sew along going on, blazers in January. Oh, I just said Blazuary, look at that. It's working. <laughs> yeah, you'll get to see it in person. You'll also get to see that I'm not as good of a sewist as people think. <laughs> I'm not bad, <laughs> but uh, Sometimes I'll be um, like looking for something as an example in like Michael's side of the closet. And all of a sudden uh, I will see like a little piece of flat felt seam has come undone. I'm like, dang it. I didn't see that during the stream. Hi Jan. Wait, am I making you nervous with my fingers? I'm nowhere near that needle. What are you talking about? Whoa. Yeah, I think binding is an option as well, as long as it's not too thick, but yeah. You could also just like, if this were the inside, you could just stitch it down, like sew the seam like this, trim one side and then stitch it down, leave the raw edge. It'll be fine. Just stitch it, you don't have to turn it under. Eventually the little threads will stop and It'll be fine. I know people don't like that, but you know, there weren't sergers and stuff. There were French seams though, probably, or something similar. There's a lot of ways to enclose a seam. I'm gonna sew my, uh, after the stream today, I'm gonna sew my project bag on my home machine. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's that's exactly it. Those are the mistakes I'll be like, oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sewing live, not always good for the special garments. <laughs> you don't, you could serge it, or you don't have to stitch it down if you serge it. I'm just thinking, hi Danny, um, if you, um, 
you don't have to finish your edges all the time, you know? That you could just, if you stitch it down, like you sew the seam and then you push it to one side, maybe trim one down so you're enclosing one, you know, like this, right? So you have your, like pretend like this is the inside of my jacket. This is, you trim this side and then you just press it over and stitch it down and closing that other seam. Yes, you'll have this little rodge on the inside of your jacket only along the sleeve, but it'll be fine. It's not gonna go anywhere. Like it's gonna last just as long as this seam here. And it'll probably be more flexible, less bulky. Um, yeah, so I know people really want everything finished, but you don't have to. We're de-influencing around here. My flat felt seam is definitely not even width. Yeah, right, Jan, exactly. Yeah, you could surge it too, yeah, exactly. See, that's, that's where I was at, Mullen. I was like, wait, 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 wait. We underlined this puppy, and now we just finish it however. Uh-uh. <laughs> I think uh, Libby had said she was going to find it or Hong Kong finish it. That's another option. So, but look at that. Nice and flat. The inside, clean, right? There's my shoulder seam right there. All right, so now underarm, we get a jacket. We get a Sylvan jacket. <laughs> Gotta just get that Willy Wonka earworm going. We get a Sylvan jacket. La, la, la. I don't know the words. Oof. Just remembered I have a bobbin and it might run out. Let's get rid of these little back stitch threads. I mean, let's face it. Jeremy can't do a, a, a sleeve that's not set in unless we're going to do it flat felt. <laughs> I had to let go of that. <laughs> it sounds like I've run out of bobbin, but it's still there. I must be getting low. You just realized they sewed the sleep. Yeah, that's how they have you do it. They have you sew it in flat. But that's the only edge that's, the armhole and the sleeve aren't finished. If you want to bind them, I would, I would do like a Hong Kong finish on each one. So the darts on my coach, I tack them down by hand, make sure, yeah, you could. All right, let's do the, the other one and then we'll um, press it. <laughs> big coat, big coat. I thought I checked the length. Like I, I looked at the length and I was like, it's a little long, but I'm down for this because it doesn't look that long on the people wearing it. The, the long length is long. I, I didn't pick that one. I love the long length one. I love the one Rachel made. It looks really good. So I think it's an option. I just didn't want in this fabric. I felt like it might look like a lab coat, even though it's not white. It just had kind of this kind of holly has a, you know, I don't want to call it a sheen. There's definitely a polliness ab about it. Yeah, exactly, Libby. That's a, that's a great suggestion. You're, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard to turn it over onto the um, seam. Like I would probably, which one would I extend? The sleeve or the, or the armhole seam? The other thing is that 
you would have had to do that and you would have had like extra fabric. Oh, wait, I need to fix this still. Ugh, okay, don't let me forget that. <laughs> I don't want to enclose that. Yeah, so I would probably think about where, which one would be better. It's thinnish. Oh yeah, that, that, that's a good, that, yeah, it probably will work good as binding then. Yeah, like Libby, she used a, a thinner binding. I used quilting cotton, you know, for my underlining, so definitely some choices had to be thought about. And Jan, this isn't blood or anything, that's just marker. You have to do the armholes. If you, yeah, if you press the seam allowance towards the sleeve, you would do the, definitely do the um, armhole, but I think I would probably think about which one I wanted. But yeah, I think it's gonna be easier going towards the sleeve. Let's check the bobbin. We're feeling a little paranoid here. Oh no, we have really full bobbin. <laughs> Why does it sound funny? Now I need to sew on something. Okay. All right, let's fix this really quick here. Just gotta do that. And my lining is barely caught there too, but we're gonna enclose that with the facing. Okay. So now this seam needs to be clipped as well. This next seam here, mine does. <laughs> I thought, oh, maybe she saw that and that's why she said that. <laughs> we were doing a little drafting, so you know. You know, um, I was, I, I've been like working on a couple of patterns just, just for me and um, like m meaning not like I'm sewing things. I am sewing things, but I'm just making my patterns. I've just been like working on a couple of patterns for myself that I wanted and uh, updating a couple like my button up and stuff. And I took the time to transfer all my pattern pieces to new paper so all the stuff wasn't on there anymore and I could, you know, trust this pattern the next time I go to sew it. Cause that's what will happen, right? You go to sew it and I'm like, oh, okay, which is right. Is it my pattern? Is it the, the one I've sewn? Did I make those changes, you know? But I, I did it and I went to punch a hole in my patterns and my rabbit was broken. So that huge hole punch I have, I've had that thing for, I've had it for so long and it's one of my first things that I invested in buying when I was a freelance pattern drafter. And it's so funny, I felt like it was a um, splurge at the time when I absolutely needed that for the business I was in. I was only doing pattern drafting, that was it. And all it does is it creates a big hole, then you can put a pattern hook on it, you can hang up the pattern. Cause otherwise your patterns are just, you, there's no other way to store them, you know? And um, mine's broken. So I brought it home last night. It weighs like 50 pounds. I brought it home last night. I was like, so Michael's gonna look at it. I hope he can fix it. I don't know what's going on with it. I don't know, Terry. It's something to do with the, um, the like the lining. I don't have it here, otherwise I'll show you. It looks, like, you know, it looks like a rabbit, right? So if you laid it on its side, there's an ear, which is the handle. And then the big hole punch thing comes down. You slip your paper in here. Chook, chook, like this. Well, the, the shaft that comes down to cut isn't going down into the hole and the little pin holding the ear to the body of the rabbit was partly out. So there's half of that pin is gone. So I'm not sure how that happened. It's not like it's in high use, you know? So yeah, sad. I saw my blood. <laughs> There's my little interior pocket. That feels like that was a lifetime ago we did that. I 
right, Susan? Oh my gosh, that's so true. Uh, you know, I think it's just one of those things when you've done, been doing something a while, you don't realize how old something is or how much you've used it, you know? Not that my sewing machine's old. My sewing machine's like one of the newest things considering it's an industrial. Like my old industrial was as old as me. It wasn't that old, but it was almost that old. I mean, the rabbit should last a lifetime. It was a big deal though. At the time it was a $65 item and it felt like I was kind of embarrassed to buy it. Now that's just like how much you just, you know, how I've grown. <laughs> you, you absolutely need a pattern punch <laughs> to be a pattern drafter. <laughs> it just felt like a splurge. I think it's just because when you do something in the sewing world, especially with other people that aren't in it, you realize to them what you do looks frivolous, right? Even though they need you, they need you to hem their pants and whatever, they still look at what you do as kind of frivolous. And so um, I think that kind of seeps in. They don't know, they don't know jack anything about what's important. So I don't think that way anymore, but I did then. But it's kind of a, um, you know, definitely a um, sentimental thing. My rabbit punch. <laughs> They're still pretty expensive, really. Now I would have like a little more trouble justifying buying it, even though, man, I I went, I reached for it to, to do my pattern and and it didn't work. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't even know what to do without this thing. Like that's how essential it is. I didn't even know how, what to do. I was a little bit like, oh, now what? <laughs> so I used a little piece of, a little pair of scissors and I hacked a hole in my patterns and hung them up. So, okay. So now let's um, check out this collar. Make sure, I think that if I were to, if I were to top stitch anything, I think I would go around the neck and the center front, not the collar. I really like how clean this looks. I could have understitched the collar and I should have mentioned that, but I didn't want to. So I, I just forgot to mention it. But um, I, if you have a collar that's well sewn and pressed, you don't need to understitch or top stitch. It does help though, and certain fabrics really need it, but this one's fine. So now we're to the hems. So let's um let's look at this thing I started down here. And let's also press this up here. Because now we're gonna stitch down our facing too. We're gonna I'm gonna bind this whole edge. It's my last step. Fifty. There's still fifty plus the shipping. So literally, it could double the price. You promised my man we'd go to lunch. So I gotta go. Oh, have a cheeseburger for me. Of all the things to burn down up here, this is the black humor we have living here. Why did they leave us with a Taco Bell? Why did the fire gods leave us with a Taco Bell, you guys? That's all we have. As far as it goes for like fast food and stuff like that. <sighs> Why couldn't we have a good burger and fry place? And there are a couple local places, but their hours are Funkorama. <laughs> They're like, nobody wants a burger at two o'clock. <laughs> I already like the way this looks, but I've got to finish this. See, I, I did this a little prematurely, so we got to finish that. See you, Diane. Nice seeing you. Right, Jan? Exactly. Okay, so we're going to... Um, let's press this butter. We need to check our center fronts before we lock all this in, too. All right. Check our center fronts. Even the fire wouldn't touch a Taco Bell. I've had to come, like I've had to figure out something I would like, you know, when we want to get something kind of, you know, 
quick and cheeky. But there are like burrito trucks I would much rather go to. They're just not open on the weekends. Because I take Mondays off also, most places are closed Mondays if they're closed anywhere, so I can't even do that, <laughs> you know? All right, so if we folded this here, that's a little too short. So this side here needs to get a little longer. Would that work right there? I think that could work. No. I don't, I still don't like the angle at the center front here, at the hem. I, I think that that's kind of weird. Let's blend this in a little bit. All right. Let's try it on. I shortened my sleeves three inches. You need a rabbit punch for sure. <laughs> it's only for punching patterns. <laughs> What do you think? Collar still floats a little bit. Not as bad. A little long. So, and then my sleeves. Maybe I didn't need to cut that much off. Not what, yeah, exactly. This pattern is pretty, pretty long. I think that that could work. Wait, why is this going like this? I literally double checked my, my, my pattern. Did I put these on backwards? I put these on backwards, didn't I? It looks, it looks kind of bulky. I'm kind of surprised. Here's my little pocket here. Let's check my phone. Okay, the pocket placement for the phone was perfect. You want to see the underlining? Well, bam! <laughs> Wait, where's the camera at? There we go. It's over here. Here we go. Okay, and then uh, in the back I have this little, um, this thing is going to go like this and scrunch it. I think that'll look, give it some shape. So now let's just fix our hems here. We can, this is the best way to do this. If you iron it like this, now you have this fold line, but we need to bind this first. Actually, we need to bind that first. So let's just take out this little bit right here. And we're gonna Hong Kong finish that. No, the, exactly. Yeah, right, Beverly, I think so. It's not, oh, it, oh, it isn't, oh, okay. Really? Okay. I thought that when I was putting it on though that I was actually trying to um, go front to back. This camera's a little loose right now. All right, so I already have, I already made my binding. You don't have to sit through that. It's right here. So we're just gonna Hong Kong finish this. And so the last couple steps are you know, you would fin it, you would you would have turned under this edge here. This is the facing right here that I'm holding here. You would turn under this edge and then you would top stitch it down. And that line is visible on the outside. So I think that's a kind of a nice little element as well. I'm gonna do a 
binding. So I really wanted a blazer with contrast binding inside. I was kind of hung up on that idea. And I figured out a way to do it by doing this. So this binding's a little wide for this though. So this might take a bit. But th this is one of the reasons why I want to do this all at the same time is that I really want to do a continuous line of top stitching around the whole jacket. When I stitch the facing down, I want to turn the corner and do the hem too at the same time. I think that'll look kind of slick. Cutting the notches off? What do you mean cutting the notches off? Make sure I get my seams pressed open there. Forgot the red, oh man. I used to sew everything basically in like cream, gray, navy, black, or white. <laughs> I don't do that now. We could do this hem at the same time. So we can do all the pressing at once. And we don't need to go all the way to the hem, right? We need to start it like right here. A lot of threads, a lot of threads. I'm so glad I could use more of this little contrast piece that I bought to go with this fabric. So long ago. I've been kind of making my way through my um, stash lately too. Just been getting some stuff sewn. You only have four colors. Of third. Yeah, you know, Elena has a variegated rainbow. <laughs> so Elena surges everything with rainbow variegated thread. I love it. <laughs> Like that's, that's a signature. You know, if a company did that, and I think com companies have done that, that manufacture clothing, people would be like, oh, look how cool this is, you know? So they would emulate it. Why is this twisted? I mean, I might, I, oh, I'm not gonna run out of binding. I made just enough, thankfully. Yeah, a rainbow for the loopers. I think gray is great. There's, there are a few different kinds of gray. I, I looked at gray for this one because I kind of wanted a white contrast, but um, I knew there wasn't a ton of top stitching and the kind of top stitching it had, you don't do from the right side, you know, like this facing. Yeah, the rainbow is such a good idea. And there's a lot of different kinds of rainbows, you know? Okay, we just need to go a certain distance, like there's, that's far enough because this gets tucked into the facing like that. See, it'll get right there. That's where we're at. All right, so let's iron this. Yeah, I agree The there, the gray I had was just a little, not, it just wasn't quite right. You know what I mean?
Oh, do I do my sleeves too? I could. I'm not entering it in the fair though. It's not like anyone will ever see it. Yeah, exactly. You could even do a rainbow of just browns, you know, like they have like variegated browns and variegated grays, jewel tone rainbow, primary rainbow, you know. Then you end up with a ton of rainbow threads. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nancy, exactly. I think that's smart. I do so much, so many seam finishes where I really should be not clipping my notches and then I forget and I do it out of habit and then I really have to struggle with the little notch. Like a flat felt seam is a really good example if I've notched or French seams, but French seams usually I can enclose the notch in the first pass. But yeah, I've gotten myself into some little pickles. Oh, you do, Aisha? That's, that's clever. Yep. We're not entering in the fair. You know what's funny? I've said that for years. I'm like, you're not entering it in the fair. Don't worry about it, right? No one's looking at it. Um, okay, I will trim this fine. Just got to find a pair of scissors. I saw that one of the classes at the show. Okay, good thing there's another pair here. Uh, is... Um, there's a class on like learning how to sew for competitions. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, I, I don't think I would ever want to sew for a competition though. Mm -mm. So what do we think about what if I do the stitch in the ditch as the stitch that shows on the outside? So this is a one step finish. I mean, I like a one step finish. <laughs> I love that. They had registering it isn't. Wait, what? You know you're going to lose drag over the back of a chair so everyone can see this. <laughs> In bed, I haven't read the instructions yet. Is that him binding option? No, it's my it's my twist. <laughs> you're supposed to just turn it under and edge stitch it. You've been using the rainbow variegated for three or four years now because it couldn't be bothered. Yeah, exactly. It's just signature, Elena. It's awesome. It's awesome. I just want to grow up and be like you. That Carhartt jacket you're going to do, Elena, is that inspired by something? Because I saw some controversy over someone. What, did, what just happened right here? What did I just do? My goodness. What did I just do? Look at this. I think my interfacing wasn't quite fused there and it was wrinkled and I just fused it to it. So, oh my goodness. Hold it together, Sylvan. My goodness. Can we get that out? What the heck? Sheesh. Oh, I, yeah, especially if you've got your signature. I can't change it. Oh, neat. They have a giant, giant, really? Oh, so that's so interesting because apparently someone is selling a something made from recycled um, Carhartts. 
And there's people who work for Carhartt and they were like, huh, those don't look like Carhartts. Like they're not actually real Carhartts. <laughs> and they're not, they're, they're actually claiming they are, but they're, they're not, they're making, they're making and selling something made with knockoff Carhartts, but claiming that they're Carhartts. Like, God, this world we live in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that would be really cool, Elena. You're going to have the real one. All right, so let's get this back in order here. So let's just stitch this down. Oh, I did it from the other side, huh? I did it from this side. Oh, goodness. Wait a minute. We positioned this. <gasps> no. Why didn't they give us pocket markings? Look at this. I caramba. What the heck? I can't get my phone in that. Oh my gosh. You just can't think of everything, even when you think you've thought of everything. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that's annoying. Oh, that's really cool, Lena. I love that. That's, I know those days and those tags. <laughs> We would reference some samples from like 10 years before trying to prove points and stuff like that. I think that now would be a good time to, to pin this um, facing down since we're here. I don't know what I'm going to do about the pocket yet, you guys. <laughs> right, exactly. See, I am your experiment. Okay, get this nice and flat, right? Nice and flat. We're going to just focus on this section right here. This is the center front right here. This is the neckline. And here is the shoulder. You can't see it, but there's, see, there's the shoulder. Okay, so we're going to get this nice and flat. And if you're, if you're just turning under yours and stitching it down, it's kind of the same thing. Sometimes the shoulder seam won't line up with itself. So just be open to that and then come back to it if you can get it to match. But like right now, mine is slightly forward. This one is slightly forward, so. So let's go add it on this side up to that point too. We still need to stitch that or cut that. <laughs> trying to a few things at one time we can pin this too and you can see why that's why I wanted my pocket to end about here because I didn't want to lose the depth of my pocket in the hem You guys don't have to stay for this. I can just do this off camera if you want. <laughs> I know we want to see the finished thing though, huh? I want to see if my center front, see, I don't like that. See that angle right there? 
but it's not, oh, I'll let it go. I won't let it go, but I won't bring it up. How's that? Is that a deal? <laughs> Need more pins. Pins. Let's move this. <laughs> this looks like it might line up on the shoulder seam. <laughs> they will. That's true, huh? I might I might get a fun funky phone pocket too. <laughs> yeah, I noticed it right away. The, cent the hem of the center front isn't uh, perpendicular to the edge here. I noticed it right away. I noticed it when I was cutting the pieces out. That kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff that will jump out at me. I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Panic in the sewing room. All right, so now I'm just kind of stacking this next seam. If you didn't sew yours like the way I did, it might be a little bit easier. I don't know. I think you stitch through your, uh, when you, cause if you sewed this to this and this to the outer, this would be separate at the neck. It would be literally separate like this. You would be able to pull these two apart right here. Right. But mine is anchored like this. I think you stitch down the middle of it. I would, if you, if you don't, I would. I would give your neck something because this right here, just stitching down the facing, that's not a, that's not really enough. You need more stabilization at the neck. I love binding. I'm just trying to get this nice and flat right here. This is the kind of thing I need a little quirky saying for. You know the the really dumb saying, a moment on the lips forever on the hips? <laughs> Let's turn that around and make it a sewing thing. It's more like a thousand years pinning equals one minute of sewing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I want. Oh, have I noticed it now? Yes, I, I did. I'll show you. We're, we're going to check the center front lengths before we finalize this whole stitching to make sure that they, you know, they line up and they're not like this, you know, at the bottom there. So um, it's going to be really apparent then. Okay, we need this really flat here. So let's let this relax a little bit more. This will probably be the fussiest part of everybody, Sylvan, is stitching down this facing, no matter how you do it, because it's just one of those things you wanna get, make sure you get nice and flat and no like um, buckling on the other side, because we haven't looked at what I'm doing on the other side yet. You know, like how is it actually doing? Let's see, I unpinned this here, so we need to sort of finesse this little front area here. Let's take that out. So I just kind of let this relax and put my neckline nice and flat. Kind of hard when it's a three dimensional object, huh? Ooh, I can't wait to see yours, Aisha. I can't wait to see all of yours. Is this the new Donnie? You could wear this over the Donnie though.
Donnie Sylvan combos. Anyone? <laughs> the Hong Kong finish is because um, I sewed this right sides together, right? And then when I turn it under, I'm only leaving it flat, Hillary. I'm not turning it under like this, binding it. Like here, I, I bound it. But here, I'm leaving it flat and it's less bulky. I don't know why it's named that. Be really cool to find out. Rip, rip to the foam pocket. I so carefully thought out. <laughs> If I can get my phone in there, we'll just leave it. But I'm writing a strongly worded letter to Santa. Okay, so then we'll have this. All right, so let's just pin a couple places in this hem. I already ironed it, but we can pin it in place. I've, I hardly ever used Hong Kong finish till the last couple of years. And I think it's because I just sort of reserve that for things like the type of sewing I don't usually do, which is like um, tailoring and blazers and, you know, stuff like that. But I think there was one project we did for hearts and I was like, this would just look so nice on the inside of this. It was a jacket a flannel jacket and I was trying to give the flannel some umph to be a jacket. It was like a long jacket. And ever since then, I'm like, I need to do this more. I feel like that was my first one in a long time that I've done. Okay, so here we go. So let's look at the outside. Look for any buckling from all this pinning of this facing here. Right. Wait, I have a tuck right here. I have a tuck right here in my neck. <laughs> That's That almost looks like one, but it's not. What's a happening in there? What's a happening? Right here. Oh, maybe that was that tuck earlier. Okay, we can fix that. All right, so let's go um, look at this uh, blasted phone pocket. Yes, exactly. That's exactly my plan, Terry. I think I might, Amy. I might as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I made one this month. Uh-oh. Donnie withdrawal. Um, all right, let me look at this little tuck here. Don't you guys groan? I bet you guys hate it more when I have an issue because you're like, no, I just want you to finish. <laughs> Night, Mullen. Sleep well. Have a good weekend. Just poke that one thread out and then take out maybe a couple more like that. And then we'll get it up back. Oof. Ay, ay, ay. There we go. You've made two and you gave one. Wait, you threw one away. Oh, I knit Donnie. Ooh, I like that. All right, where's that little spot that I just took out? It's right there, okay. All right, we've, that was easy to fix. All right, let's get these pins back. Oh, that's a bummer, Rachel, I hate that. My, my biggest thing that I do wrong when I'm fitting something is midway, I'll go a different direction. You know, I'll be like, you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll do a drop shoulder <laughs> and I don't just make any pattern. And the other one wasn't even done. 
And so then I'm switching. Like, you can switch, that's fine. But you probably should finish what you're doing before you do that. <laughs> I do that a lot. And then three weeks will go by. That's, that's my other thing. It's like, oh shoot, where was I? All right. So let's just clean up these hems down here and let's see how they look when they're overlapped. It looks so cute. Let me zoom out a little bit. You guys can only see the, um, the pocket here. There's my Sylvan. Take down that sharpness some more. Yeah, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I do that. I can totally relate to that. It's not even that you decided to go a different direction in fitting, which I've done that too. It's like, you know what? This would be so good as a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're not going to get rid of the seeing this little seam here. You don't need out. <laughs> I don't know if you can even, there is a slight angle though. <laughs> you know, it's okay to have a tried and true. I never, I made a pullover camp shirt last year. So I was gonna try and jump on the Donnie train. Um, with that pattern, but I never even got around to that. Okay, I have enough binding to do my sleeves, Amy, so I think I will. All right, so we just need to sew this in here, yeah, okay. So we're just gonna pretend like this is sewn. Put this back together. Doing this kind of backwards, sorry. I'm trying to find that hint, there it is, okay. Okay, so now we can trim this. I trim my facing off and I only trim a little bit of the hem away just to, for the bulk there. Right, no. Trim this right side out. Donnie dress. Are you making a Donnie dress? <laughs> That's right, Elaine. I forgot your your Gilbert bin. <laughs> okay, so there. That's ready to go. Look how nice that looks, right? Am I right? So my idea is to come down and then just turn and make this one continuous stitch all the way around my whole jacket. Okay, so now let's get this hem in order here. Just get rid of this thread, it keeps bugging me. Oh, I haven't checked out my, my um, I'm in denial of my interior pocket. Okay, let's just look at it real quick. Donnie dress. You wanna sew a patina blouse and see how the arm is. If I like it, I use that for a long sleeve dye. Uh oh, that's cool. Okay, so let's trim off the facing and a little bit of the hem. And we're gonna reinforce this corner since there's only a back stitch going across that way, not on this original seam here. There we go. Corners. 
Okay, let's check the, um, let me just pin this real quick and then we'll check the pockets. I don't have buttons yet, it's kind of a bummer. Usually I can make something work, but, mm. Wait, what kind, I thought they had an all-in-one sleeve. What does the Donnie have as far as a sleeve goes? I can't remember. Yeah, Elena's got the Gilbert thing. Yeah, I think you guys could totally do a zipper front. I was thinking that I would do a tutorial this year on making a pattern pullover that's not and vice versa, because that would be perfect if you wanted to make anything into like, a, like the Donnie as a pullover, right? All right, so here's my, here's my pocket. All right, it still works. And I'm gonna stitch it here. I think I'm just gonna let it go. Cause you know, I could still put pins and keys in here if I don't put the phone in there, right? And it wasn't hard to get in there, see, like. Okay. All right, um, I think that's everything. We just need to sew this down now. And I'm gonna start at the side seam here. Put my back stitch right here. You ready? <laughs> this is it. I, this, so this will be loose. This little bound edge will be kind of loose like this. I am, keep getting onto this binding, which is really annoying. I think it's because I'm going the other way. I'm better going the other direction, like with the binding on the right hand side. See you, Julie. Yeah, you, you need to sleep off that brunch. <laughs> Brunch sounds good. That, right, Jackie? I was thinking I might go to the local yarn store to get buttons, because they always have such interesting buttons. And my local fabric store, they just have like the dill rack, you know? Oh, that's right, you guys are using the Gilbert sleeve. I thought you were using a, a Friday Pattern Company sleeve. One strap if you wanted contrast stitching but you're a little afraid to do it from the right side is just do your this one in matching thread. I'm stitching in the ditch, yeah. So if you don't like that look, like you don't like that, that fact that this is loose right here, you could edge stitch too. Well, it's not that great. You guys are so funny. It's not, I'm not doing that great of a job. I mean, look, I fell onto the fabric there. Yeah. It would be doing it better if I was going the other way. I'm not, my, my machine will kind of do better like the the way the the presser foot hits the fabric if i were going at it from the other direction but oh well all right we got our sewing legs under us and now we're going to be up going around the neck but um you could just sew this with with matching thread because look you know you can can barely even see mine there it is but then i could go back and do a contrast thread from the right side right on top of it You'd be really amazed how many people do this and they don't mention it. It looks really nice. It's perfectly acceptable too. Yeah, sometimes stitching in the ditch. I, I think you just have to have the right foot. Um, and like I say, when I go at it with the binding on the right hand side, it does a lot better. Like I was doing it earlier and it was like perfect. I didn't even barely have to guide it. All right, so. Wow, 
Woof. <laughs> Let's put this over here. Two o'clock? What? Well, who's getting me a burger? We aren't co-tour sewing around here. I keep getting this little, do you see it? This little bump right here. I'm, I guess I'm, I brought about that zoom way out, but right here. Eh, eh. Let's see if we can get that to line up better, but I just keep undoing the pin. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul right now. I just hope it's not directional looking on the right side. Right now I'm stuck on the binding. I'm almost done. <laughs> oh, bye pocket. Ooh, it really sewed through that part really well. I don't like that showing. <laughs> I'll have to hand sew it if I want to get rid of it though. One more stitch. I have a feeling my stitches of my hems won't be <laughs> the same left and right. Because remember I had to like shorten one of the hems. Yeah. That's why when you meet people and your handmaids, did you know that you're supposed to go like this when you meet people? <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> they can't focus on anything. You're like, look what I made, that kind of thing. And then that way no one knows, right? If things are symmetrical, ugh, symmetrical, right? Helicopter arms. All right, do we have any more pins in here? Ooh, it's so solid. Look at that. Look at that jacket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My hems. Okay. It feels so comfortable and roomy. It looks a little like denim. I got to really back up for you to see it. Pockets are perfect. Exactly. You never notice it unless you point it out. I think I will do contrast stitching though. I don't know about the these going towards my front though. I think that's really weird. It's so, why is it so um, bulky and stiff right around here? You know? It's that drop shoulder thing. Bam. Let's try my. That works. It honestly could be taller, but it won't fall out. Don't, they don't. They go towards the front. Did I, I think I did them wrong. <laughs> I think I did them wrong, even though I was like really careful. And I know I didn't swap my, swap my sleeves because I made sure of that too. So somewhere along the line, I didn't make sure of something. Oh, it's this is the thing I need to tighten. There we go. 
so I want to, I want to do my little tab on the back. I'll do my sleeves without you guys. You don't need to see that. Um, but if you, when you do your sleeves, I do have a tip though. If you have a flat bed machine like me, you don't have a free arm and you need to get in here and hem this, however you're doing it, keep your garment right side out like this. And so then this way, the sleeve is above and you can sew like this. It's a lot easier, trust me. Okay, let's just, this is my little thing that I did. As someone put it on Instagram, is that a Ceramy special or did that come in the pattern? I was like, oh, Ceramy special. Oh, did I just run out of bobbin thread? No, I did not. What's up with you? What was that about? Making sure nothing's caught on something, but it's all there. It's okay. But why didn't I start down here? Well, I'll just, I know. Why did I do that? That was funny. So funny sometimes, but not in the ha-ha way. All right. <laughs> exactly. Sammy <Send me> bonus. <laughs> okay. I think I could do this without. No, I don't think I could do that without that. Let's see. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, Rachel. I'm pretty sure, oh man, I went too far to go all the way. I'm pretty sure that they go from front to back, right? And I did it wrong. <laughs> if you did it too, then I'm gonna say they did it that way. And we can just stand in solidarity together. How's that? <laughs> I was so relieved when I saw so many people making the dewy dress flipped like I did. Cause I felt really bad about doing that for that video. I was like, oh my gosh. And um, then when I saw a lot of other people do it, I was like, okay, I feel a lot better. I mean, I didn't want that to happen, but. Okay, let's need to get this here and now I can pull on it. Now let's do this side. I'm just gonna tack this on the back like with some pins so we can see the cinching in action. And then I'll let you guys go. How's that? Deal, okay, good. <laughs> can I do that on my blouse I just made too? I made this blouse, it turned out beautiful, um, but I cut the wrong sleeve out, which I don't know how I did, but I was looking at a few different patterns at the time. And I think that I mistook one pattern for the one I wanted for my button up. And the um, sleeve was too big. So I, ha I was like, well, I've already put the cuff, the placket, all of this on the sleeves. I already French seamed the underarm. Like all I have to do is set the sleeve on. This thing is done and hem it. And I, um, um, I put the gathers in the cap sleeve, put it on, I, I put the shirt on and I was like, okay, I don't mind the gather. I'm not much of a puff sleeve person, but in this floral, it's that one that was on my dress form. It looks kind of cute, it, it works, it's okay. I had shaped it, I put a lot of princess or, uh, darts in it. So, um, but then when I tried it on, I was like, you know, this wasn't the right sleeve. It needs to be an inch longer. And I really want this blouse to be something I like. And I have a lot of fabric. I don't know why I had like 24 inches left or something. So I was like, you know what? Oh, shoot. I'm going to cut the sleeve again. 
So I cut the sleeve again, I cut the cuffs again, I cut the plackets again. I sewed the cuffs, the plackets. I underarm, did the fringe seams of the underarm. I did all of it. Um, and then I put the sleeves on and I was hungry at the time. I was like, you know what? Just stop and before you make a mistake, like putting the sleeves on the wrong armholes, go eat lunch. I came back and that's what I did. I put the sleeves on the wrong armholes. So they're beautiful. <laughs> they're the right sleeves on the wrong armholes. So now I need to take these sleeves off again and I have barely have enough seam allowance left on this armhole. Like it was only a half inch to begin with and I was French seaming. So, man, can I trim this? See, then poke the rest of that back in there. This little skin piece, there we go, okay. All right, let's just iron this. Hi, Bonnie, thanks. Yeah, I think I will too. Let's see, that point could be a little better there. Oof. I may need just to do a different little band. This is just so hard to get looking nice with this fabric. It's so non-reactive. Non like look at this side over here. <laughs> there we go. There's like a little shoulder there. This is when you wanna do contrast top stitching. And even if you're not parallel to the edge, you, you sew it in that perfect shape. <laughs> Cause when this sits on the fabric, you won't see this and then it'll look like it was perfect because your stitching is good. Optical illusions. No, I'm not putting the trash. I really want it. Like, I really like the fabric. I definitely was like, I, I was so non-reactive at the end. I was like, I have wasted my whole day on this. I could have been doing something that I should be doing instead of making this shirt. But I've been, I'm waiting for stuff to arrive for my kit. So I was just like taking advantage I could have been making a how-to video or something good for my channel. No, I made myself a blouse because I need another blouse. That's That was a sewing fairy telling me, you know, you shouldn't have done this. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You'd think the sewing fairy would be on your side for um, sewing when you shouldn't be. Okay, I need to iron this again, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Hillary. Yeah, you just do the, the, I've done that before on collars and stuff. It really works. I'm gonna just open this out like this. And now fold it on that edge. And same over here. We're gonna pull this apart and iron it. I will beat this into submission. Okay, now. I don't like this thing though. It's just not very nice. I just need to top stitch this puppy and get it in, get it done. Doesn't it look symmetrical by a long shot? And I can't tell if that's the texture of the fabric. Oh gosh, it is the texture of the fabric. That's such an optical illusion. Yeah, it's interfaced both sides. <laughs> that's why it's a little hard. Okay, so let's just stitch it down. It's it's not great. This is something I can work on. My my shoulders here are a 
<laughs> not across from each other either. Oh man. I hate sewing these little points. These sometimes get stuck down into my presser foot, so I'm gonna be ready to pull on it a little bit. Make sure it actually feeds. points. See like that. All right. Okay, so my plan is to put a button on this little tab here, on here. All right, let's see how it looks on me. <laughs> I like that this kind of feels and looks like a blazer, but it doesn't have the stuffiness of a blazer, you know? How's it look? Does it look okay? Is it doing what I want? It looks crooked. Why does it look crooked? Is that me? I might have to do my own little video. It looks too far apart. It's too far apart, don't you think? I think that I'll move that. You could even do elastic back there if you if we wanted. I think it's too far apart. I think that this needs to be more like this this wide. And yeah, and further up, I think so too. So something like that and then more like up here. Is that cinch it in too far though? Let's see, we'll go like this. Is this a better uh, placement? Is that a symmetrical? Just about. Ow. <laughs> okay, something like this. Okay. Only an inch? Oh shoot, I did it a little more than that. I don't know, it's looking kind of chunky. How's it look? I'm gonna let it video a little bit and then I can watch it in the live stream. Here's the side view. Hmm, oh, I'm a little off camera. Better. I don't know. Maybe this wasn't what I wanted. It's crooked. It's looking, um, it's looking like, what's it looking like? Like artist smock? I'm not sure I like it. Try that longer length at that height, really? <laughs> um, what if we tried it on the sides? 
So let's try um, it on the, the side here. So like here, a, a lot shorter though. Uh, what if we tried this? Like this. Okay. Yeah, I agree, Danny. I think it's not. This was what this is what they have. Maybe that's too high up. I think that looks better. I had to be over here, right? I just thought the back looked kind of bland. Without, it looks, it's so thick and boardy. Okay, let me look at the replay. I think the side, maybe a little lower and less pulled in. I think I like the underarm. Yeah, I think I do too. All right, well, this is something I feel like I don't mind stitching all, through all the layers for. So I can remove these little patches here and just move them. I just think the back is kind of boring. You like the back, okay. On the back, Monica. Let me think about this. Hmm. What if it had something like um, a tuck or something like this? You know? A release tuck. You could even center it. What if it's something like that? Right. This is the last thing I'll check and I promise I'll let you go because I, I need to eat too. <laughs> Help me. I wish we couldn't see the pins, but you know. Yeah, maybe that's what it is, Terry. Maybe the belt needs to be wider, like as far as like the the width of the hole, like the width of it, like, yeah. About that. I really feel this right here. About just that. And maybe do the side thing too. Hmm. I don't know. I'll put it on my dress form and play around with it. I would just I would just, just do it. I mean I, I did I did leave this back seam here live so I can I can take this in, but I think you could just stitch it down. You know, I would just sew it from the inside here like it was a tuck. And then I'm, what I would probably do is then center the tuck like this, right? I would, cent I would push the fabric so that it's centered, like opened, and then I would stitch a box over it on both sides. Tucks with a more substantial tab, okay. And yeah, more. 
Right. I kind of get what you're saying. Like a trench coat. Like something more like this width, right? Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't need to be a, a point either. You know what I mean? Like maybe if it was just a, a um, belt. Um, maybe, it, oh, let's see if we can get, here we go. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but something like that. We could even do it in the tuck like this. That'd be kind of slick. Dang, I've always wanted to do this. Right? Like that. <laughs> yeah. Like that, yeah. I think that I think that that's a there's potential here. If I can get in the right place, because I can always put a button there. Just put a button on there if I want, or I could just leave it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming along on the ride. This was a really fun make. Yeah, I can still button the front. It's pretty big. It's a pretty, I have to say, it feels, it's a pretty, like, weighty jacket. <laughs> this outer fabric was pretty thin, and this is just quilting cotton. So I think that this could get pretty thick quickly with what you pick. Yeah, it'll have buttons on the front. I might do a top stitch, a contrast top stitching here so you can see that too. And then um, I just need to do my sleeve hems. And then th this will have matching buttons right here. The only buttons I ha had kind of thought about were um, this one right here. Oh, sorry. Was this one right here. This button. So this is the closest one I had that I was like, this could work. It does, there's no yellow in the fabric. Look, I, I, I hate this like that, <laughs> but whatever. It is what it is. I'm glad I did the other thing. Okay, so let's see if we have Jacket, right? Oh, awesome, Jackie. I can't wait to see yours. They're not coat buttons, so they do have holes. You know what I mean? Oh, this actually looks pretty cute. Yeah, because it, it's kind of boring. <laughs> Terry's finally catching on. Yeah, I mean, kind of, yeah. See you, Hillary. Yeah, I know. I, I ended up buying that plaid, Amy. <laughs> I was in chat like five seconds the other day. And Danielle's all, did you see the plaid one? I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw that plaid one. And then she linked the fabric. I was like, gosh, dang it. And I bought that fabric. I think this looks really cute in person. I really love the way these um, buttons look with this fabric. I think this is cute. I think I'll do this. No, I fixed the floatiness of the, I fixed how this floats above. So I fixed that. I can't really fix the, the seam showing or this, right? I can't, it, cause it comes down to a point. I can't really. When it's on, it'll do better, right? It's gonna hug like this. 
you know? So, oh my gosh, Jackie. <gasps> I forgot about things like food delivery. Oh my gosh, could I do that? There's not even a burger place open. I don't know what, stop it. Bye. No. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for coming along. I don't know what I'm streaming next. Um, it's either pants or the blouse I'm making. Sorry, I'm so loosey goosey. But uh, a couple weeks from now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll be here sewing something. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the guild for workshops and stuff like that. Cellophane cheesecake. <laughs> Oh, I thought you guys liked me. <laughs> Thanks for coming, you guys. I hope you make a Sylvan. Let me know if you make a Sylvan. I want to see yours, especially if you follow the directions. <laughs> Bye, you guys.